Hey, 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 listen, you know why you're here, and it probably means you're a terrible person, because <laughs> you listen to the podcast known as Trapped Under Plastic, the miniature hobby podcast, where we talk about sprues and do! Yeah, I got do today this time. There was like 80 exclamation marks, so I needed it to sound Oh, yeah, you were getting excited. Like, the tone of your voice was getting higher and higher. Yeah, that's what happened when I get excited. If these trends continue. Yeah. You're going to be screaming in falsetto. I'm loving your shirt right now. It's a nice little button-up you got. Where'd you get that? Uh, my wife got it for me for my, my birthday. Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's technically a jacket. It's waxed sailcloth. Okay, so like... Feel it. Feel it. So can you just like sail away then, or...? It's like... Sail away! It's a, it's technically a work coat. Okay. And if... if we're going to see, because I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to give it away. I'm going to see if anyone in any of the goody peepees that are watching... And if you're listening, you can just pop over to YouTube and, and pick it up and just see if you know what this jacket is from. Oh, it's from something. It's from something. Okay. And so I was looking at knockoff versions. And uh, this is the name. This is the official one. Oh, it's got a little pattern inside. Yeah, it's 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 uh, flannel lined. Okay. Um, and the name of the company is Flint and Tinder. Mm, very manly. Uh, yeah. Very manly. Ironically, they're out of San Francisco, which okay. is like yeah. the opposite. Um, yeah, dude. It's, but just two like manly things together. Yeah. Hatchet and leather. Like, <clears throat> there's a company name for you. Yeah. Easy. I know. It's pretty badass. And they've been around for a long time. So yes. if you get what this jacket is from, and, and uh, I don't know if I... I don't know if I want people to know. This man speaks in references. He wears references. I, this is eventually this. he will eat references. Right, and the, this reference also ties into my truck. Is also the reference to this. Oh, so in it's, a way it's to a the Batman same show. Where, where's that jacket? Yeah, this is a Batman jacket. Okay. It's actually Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking with full on tux. Yeah, like when Alfred's got a day off. <laughs> yeah, and, okay. he, and he walks by the he Little walks Flint by the Tinder? lake. You know, he walks by the lake, he feeds the ducks. Yeah. You know, this is what he wears. Wax sailcloth. Right, wax sailcloth. Dude, if you had undies like that, how would that feel? Oh, man. It would not feel great. No, it wouldn't. No. But I, I wore it out in the rain today, and it's just like fun because it's new. And, and uh, one thing I learned, they're like, you know, how do you take care of this jacket? Because it's an expensive fucking jacket. Mm. And, they, and they're like, this is meant to be a work jacket. You beat the fuck out of it, and it will live forever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to put this in my... You know, it's going to pass this down for generations. Yeah. My daughter's going to get my shitty ass jacket when yeah. I die. Yeah. And she'll sell nice. it in a garage sale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the pre up ramble about jackets. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, I played recently, this last Friday, three different board games. Uh, I'm working on a video right now. Wow. And my job is awesome. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty sweet job. You yeah. Get it. So we had uh, AJ, one of our local friends, come over, and uh, him and Curtis and I all played a bunch of games. As many as we could get through in a work day, um, some were a little bit longer. They played Townsfolk Tussle, Marvel United, and also the Street Fighter uh, board game. Uh, all very good games. I recommend them all if you can find them. A lot of them are like only kickstarted uh, board games because they didn't have enough money to get to retail or or they just didn't want to, whatever the reasons. Play these games, but you can't. Yeah. So, fuck off. <laughs> hey, I, I didn't pick the games AJ did, but I'm just saying, they're good. And if you can get your hands on them, like, I know the Source might have some Street Fighter, like, either models or versions of the game, because they bought, like, stuff from the campaign when um, it was, like, on Kickstarter. Yes, they have the Marvel one Marvel with United? all the Kickstarter shit. Like, oh, nice. I saw you could, they have like different versions of it because some of the badass um, game stores out there and they're, unfortunately, they're few and far between but if you could find one, you know, you got to suckle on that. Um, <laughs> they actually get like the Kickstarter retail backer where you get like X number of copies and yeah. you get all the, the crazy shit but yeah, they had like up to like a $350, $400 version of that game with fucking Ooh. everything. Got and a ton it, of heroes in that game, dude. Yeah, bro. And then you get like the bonus, like shirtless Logan model mm. and, and stat cards and shit. I love a you, shirtless Chibi Logan. Yeah, you. That's the only way you could get him is if you backed the Kickstarter at that mm. level and you got fucking shirtless Logan. Okay, o old man Logan. But yeah, let me give you my like high level review of these games. All right, all right. Townsfolk Tussle is like KDM, but it's more compact and the art style is more like nineteen twenties. 
like Cuphead inspired. Oh yeah, uh, see? exactly. You know, um, and I really like how it's more of a condensed KDM. Or also like Hate has this same problem where like there's a game and and also Blackstone Fortress. There's a game inside the game that I don't fucking care for. Uh, ah, yeah. the whole village phase thing. Like all those games have something like that. Yeah. Um, and this game is it's super condensed. It just gets you right back into the next boss fight, and I I really like it a lot. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Also, the flavor text is super like disgusting. We oh, were, sweet. We were fighting against this uh poop this, monster. Like, no, like a, a frog milk man, but it's not milk. It's like his secretions. Oh, it's lordy. Like slimy white liquid <laughs> like which obviously has other connotations. Of course it does. Uh, so that was hilarious. It was hilarious and it was fun. Uh the Street Fighter game is a is a one-on-one but also could be a free for all. We did the free for all version. Uh, and like the way the cards work in the game are like really reminiscent of how like combos work like in the oh, fighter game. Yeah. Um. So that that was really cool. I actually really like that game. The mechanics were a lot of fun. And then lastly, Marvel United often gets related to Pandemic. You ever play Pandemic? Yeah, I played Pandemic and Pandemic Legacy. Yeah. So Weird. Marvel Union Out Night is like pin. So it's it's like a, a map control game. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There are zones that you are going to. Um, but the game changes based on who the villain is. We were playing against Magneto, um, and he has certain mechanics that, like, you know, uh, oh, affect different zones. Yeah, that they'll, they'll take they'll take civilians and turn them into like thugs and stuff like that, which is kind of like viruses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get it now. So, it took me a while to get there, but I get it. Yeah. So I'll say that people often relate it to um, Pandemic whenever I hear people talk about Marvel United, but I would say it's definitely unique enough to be like worth its own like purchase and, and play through. But playing as different heroes and stuff, you get different cool abilities and how you yeah, know, like yeah, stuff and everything. So yeah, that, it's like a, a cooler deck. version of Pandemic then. Yeah. I played as Mystique, uh, and we had a Night Stalker, and we had... I forget who else we had. But yeah, it was like fun. Night Stalker? Like, oh, one of the guys from Night, Night Stalker? No, the Night Stalker. What the fuck is the Night Stalker? He's the guy in the movies who was like... He like grabs people and like teleports somewhere with them or he can just do it himself you mean nightcrawler did i say nightcrawler you said night stalker oh yeah that's okay bad. we'll edit that part out so totally night, scott doesn't get any shit <laughs> i'll i'll take the shit i don't give a fuck about superheroes night, night stalker nightcrawler. the night stalkers oh is uh a superhero group of which morbius is a member yeah morbius and blade and uh oh, flamey flamey skull uh, motorcycle boy no, Ghost Rider wasn't. Johnny Blaze, I think, maybe was. Ghost, but Ghost Rider teamed up with them often because they were like, oh, they're, it's like the emo kids all hang out at the lunch table together. <laughs> 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 so I love like, that. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I wanted to take a step back to, to talk about, was it, what was it? Tom's Folk Tussle? Which yes. is a fucking great alliteration name. I, I have it here if you want to take a look at it briefly. That's yeah. Cool. I, I think I will. But. I'm with you because you talked about the the settlement phase, and I've played enough games that have that to different degrees. And um, Kingdom Death is very much a game where it's like, we want you to enjoy record keeping, right? They want you to Mm. like fucking spreadsheets and shit. (laughs) And... (laughs) Now, and there's a level of depth to it that's like because they're so deep that way, like you get this like like full immersion, so much customization. Your game doesn't feel like if you played the game again and next week or you started a new campaign with a different group or whatever, it'll always be different. So there's the cool level of that. But like hmm. I th- I'm with you that there is like this and I don't know if I've played a game that does it exactly, but I've had some that I, I really like is that there's a there's a ideal version of that that i think like 80 percent of gamers would enjoy the most where it's like you feel like you have this extra level when you're going back to town and it's got some exciting things but it's like bow, patow, patow, new weapon at the weapon shop oh cool see what we can craft blah 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 do a couple of weird fun things there's an event that happens and then you, boom move on you're moving on yeah. right like i think that that is a thing you know so eventually we make a board game mm. board game now yeah we can do both okay okay we can do a board game and we can do because the thing about a board game is a board game it's less work for us long term right that is true less right. support right right I and mean, we can come up with like sweet ass expansions of hot new minis and different different hot editions. new minis yeah that's, that's the, the the next kickstarter just like the tagline is hot new minis <laughs> you can play as night stalker <laughs> Not the group. <laughs> He's actually a frog milk man. <laughs> <laughs> he stalks the night carrying his milk. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Or is it milk? Mm, it's not milk. It's a little too viscous. <laughs> oh. Okay. We're making a board game now. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Night Stalker the Frogman. <laughs> That's the name of the game. It's working title. It's working title. <laughs> if nothing said stone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did I have anything to talk about in fucking Preamble? Yeah, I just dude, want to talk about fucking Street camera. Game. I just want there to be the Street Fighter board game. They need to come with, what was the name of that game, that board game that had a button? Either you pressed it and it was a buzzer. It was like, it was a taboo. I don't oh, know. It was yeah, a game yeah, yeah, your taboo. kids or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There just needs to be a big button like that in the Street Fighter game that when you hit it, it says, round one, yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like fatality or right. like whatever. Nah, that's Mortal Kombat. Yeah, but Mortal Kombat, but, but, Tekken. Yeah, the, the, the Street Fighter round one fight is like the most fucking iconic. Or they'd be like, sure, you can. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. That that was another thing is that they were, both of them had played Street Fighter the game. Oh, yeah. But I have never played a fighting game ever because my perception of them is that they're very crunchy video games. And I already have like one genre that's very crunchy. I don't really feel like I can really spread out to that and be any good at it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, video game fighting games in their heyday, I would say, like, their their first, like, coming on strong was when I was a kid. It was, like, my main formative years of video games. Mm -hmm. I played so much fucking Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Tekken. And eventually I got, um, when Marvel vs. Capcom came out for the Dreamcast to age myself, Marvel vs. Capcom, I, I mean, like, if I, I felt like I was probably the best person in the state of Minnesota at that game at one point. I was so that fucking ping good. Pong, right? Yeah, that and ping pong. <laughs> I, I played ping pong. So, I, ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the com comments, uh, I think it was on the, somewhere it was on the Facebook group or a comment from a previous video, so like, do Americans really call table tennis ping pong? And I'm like, first of all, it's called fucking ping pong. Second of all, don't ever name your sport referencing another sport because that's just confusing. Because yeah. like, in order to understand what, what table tennis is, you have to already know what tennis is. Yeah, but in order to know what fucking ping pong is, you, you're you're lost already. You're like, it's a it's a table and there's a ball. You hit it back and forth over a net. Well, yeah, exactly. But like ping pong is kind of a dumb fucking name. Now that it's I'm thinking about it, great name. I mean, it's like goofy Saudi. I know that's why it's great. Like, what's the ping pong version of soccer? Like kick fast or like footy <laughs> yeah i mean like yeah it's some like it's gotta be footy right yeah yeah okay it's a funny name but it is kind of dumb yeah I, it's i assume that it's it's ancient chinese name <laughs> ping pong yeah that's what it's i mean because those aren't english words i, I suppose they could be i thought they were just like sound effects <laughs> You know, it's like the sound the game these makes. Are, exactly. It's like what's the sound that soccer makes? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Like, <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. Now I want to know what are the sounds that each sport makes? <laughs> Football is just like huh, uh. <laughs> exactly. I feel like ba basketball could include like swish, you know, something like that. It's 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 uh, squeaky squeakers. Okay, yeah. Squeaky sneakers Squeak and then swish. swish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that sound. <laughs> this this podcast is yeah, this is this is a piece of shit. <laughs> this is a fucking podcast. <laughs> you know what you signed up for. It wasn't fucking miniature talk. <laughs> um, I have a couple I have a couple things to talk about in preamble ramble. One of them I'm gonna actually. Really, he has a couple things. We're like 20 minutes in already. <laughs> really ties into the the topic of today, so I'm not gonna talk about it now. We'll talk about it later. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, Gen Con just recently wrapped up, mm. and I've been kind of you know all of our mini painting and YouTuberies and. Twitch stream and friends and game and friends and fucking Dan and Evan and all these motherfuckers got to go to Gen Con <laughs> and uh, I get to like see their goddamn pictures and shit on the internet. <laughs> and so I get a little spicy. I was like, God damn it. Why don't I get to go? <laughs> and I could have went and I just kind of have this like this con left out feeling yeah. you know like i wasn't part of the cool kids i didn't get to experience all the funsies john you are the cool kids man you bring the party so if I you're know. not there there is no party yeah i mean going to con is all about bringing the party yeah dude you know if you're not there to have fun with your people mm. get out get out what are you going we don't want you you know i see these people going to these cons and they're teaching like eight classes i'm like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> making money dude i know they are making money and they're working hard yeah dude god don't don't disrespect the hustle oh no i i'm not disrespecting it i'm just like maybe i'm a little bit jealous because i don't have that kind of hustle <laughs> yeah no shit but i think you know the thing is with us like i feel like and i don't not to speak for you but i feel like i'm like working my hustle hard 
every day. Mm. And so if I go to a place that's Hold like on. a mecca. Would you say that every day you're hustling? <laughs> every day I'm hustling. <laughs> yeah, hustling okay. yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so when I go there, like I just like the energy, right? Mm. You know, you got to adapt kind of like there's fucking energy. And like I get all like an ADHD schizo kid and I'm just like, I can't, I can't sit and fucking do things and talk to people and like, like to teach them something important. I got to run around and I got to hump the space Marines leg. <laughs> yeah. Now everyone who bought our LVO class is like, maybe I should return this. Like, yeah. John's going to hump me during the class. Well, that's what you paid for, isn't <laughs> it? That's, look, 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 you know what you're getting into. <laughs> And it's gonna be fun. I mean, we're gonna teach some stuff, but like we have fun teaching yeah, some stuff. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Did you have you? Did you feel that at all? Did you like when you are scrolling through the old Insties, Facey bookies, and shit? Uh, a little bit, not a ton. I know. I mean, I know Gen Con's kind of a, a shit show in terms of like attendance, um, which I I wouldn't necessarily want to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's that Insta life. You only see things that is like in the rose tinted glasses version of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. you just see the good. Yeah, um, Evan came back and was just like crap talking the uh, the Song of Ice and Fire event. Oh, I listened to that stream where he he didn't breathe for forty five minutes and Hell just yeah. talk shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the tournament. And you know, I've been there with various games, uh, tournaments and stuff over the years, and like I feel you, man. Like it feels bad when you just have a experience that's less than ideal. And yeah, like, this is all like administratively. There was some, there's big fuck ups along the way and you're like you could have this isn't a fucking new invention running a game tournament motherfuckers yeah. right yeah it's like it's the classic thing where it's like person runs this thing that i care more about than them and so yeah. they just don't like take care to like do it the right way yeah. and it's easy to say when you really care about it and you're looking at it from an outside perspective that it f may feel like they aren't caring when in, you right don't, you don't know them to really know and yeah. all the work they did leading up to it and, and sometimes from having my previous life of, of work of having to run big events that things can go 95% right. But if the 5% personally affects somebody, like it can feel like the whole thing is shit. And yeah. so it's, it's, that's tough, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that one, Evan, you know, you can just be an old man on the porch and complain <laughs> that, that you fucking lost games. Cause you suck. <laughs> You know, we we need to we need to go to Gen Con for one sole purpose, and it's to dethrone Vinci, Vinci V. That was my big big fucking thing. Was like, how dare he win? <laughs> you know what he won with, by the way? Did yeah, you see what the model? fucking model that we painted in the our hangout. Vinci Con hangout. He fucking he did some more some more strokes on it, and then right. tossed her that, in that fucking pie plate. What? <laughs> dude, hell yeah, dude! Yo, the plinth that I made, or no, I didn't make it. I I just printed it yeah you, i mean you designed it yeah but the detail on top yeah. i didn't even do the one of my own fucking base someone else based my own model while i was painting mine yes yeah, sam sam was <laughs> sam was basing yours but that fucking pie plate it won pie plate for president my friend that's the new trend now all models are coming on a little cheese wedge dude we should fucking bring all our golden demon models on cheese wedges yeah let's just make it happen like yeah. don't say anything about it be like why is it it's like what are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, you didn't bring a cheese wedge? Uh, yeah. uh, I don't. I don't think the judges are gonna like yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is the new standard. Yeah. See, the good thing about a cheese wedge is, you know, <laughs> you got the two straight sides and then the curved side, and then one of the straight sides, you could put a backdrop up that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Also, that point, that's the optimal viewing angle. Yeah. Like I'm just telling you what it is. Yeah. Like your eye is naturally drawn to that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is only logical. Yeah. This is all part of the plan. It's like a trivial pursuit. <laughs> The little wedges, people aren't gonna get that. That's okay. Um, so I'm feeling that, and so I told myself that, and this is I'm not putting this in the universe because it absolutely needs to be reality. But it's something I'd, I, if I say it, then maybe I will actually be fucking proactive. Um, that I'd like to go to one new convention each year, in addition to going to Adepticon and then over the next five years, I'll feel like I will have experienced, um, you know, many of them, especially the big ones at least once. And then fucking Tendicon will just beg everyone and steal all the great ideas. There you go. Like this is market research. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. Wait, so quite, what's the new con you're going to this year then? Well, and I, I, 
I am not going to count Elvion. Okay, I was just going to ask you. I was I like, for next year, you're not going to Gen Con again? Yeah. Um, I, the one that I would, the ones that I'm most excited for would be Nova. I think Nova is kind of closely fits. Oh yeah, here's a question. What's like your top three cons to go to? I mean, not counting Adepticon. Not counting Adepticon. Yeah, like uh, additional cons. Yeah. Okay, I think it would be, and I feel like I'm missing one, but the three that jump out to me would be Nova, Gen Con, and ReaperCon. Okay. But I feel like I'm missing a, an important one there. Well, there's some ones that happen in different countries. Like you have like, uh, oh. like World Model Expo, which happens like every two or three years. Yeah. In different places. Like it happened in Chicago, and then it moved somewhere else. Now I think it's going to France next Monty. time. Monty. Monty Sansevino. You have like uh, scale, mo- scale Model Challenge, SMC. Um Okay, and so some this year the World Model Expo and SMC were to combined. I don't think so. I Maybe th- I thought World Model Expo was at SMC or the other. I'm shocked. So I think there, actually I think you're right because SMC happens in Eindhoven typically, and World Model Expo happened in Eindhoven this year. So maybe they combined it. I'm not totally sure. But so yeah, yeah. Yours, yours is Gen Con, uh, Nova, and what? Ripakan. Ripakan. Okay, here's the thing. I I do want to go, at least once before I die to each of. Um, SMC and, and Monty. Yeah. I do, my brain doesn't think of those as conventions, though. But maybe they really are, are more similar. Okay. Um, I know they have a big vendor hall and stuff, though, so maybe it is fairly similar, and they probably have classes. I gotta imagine. They, they have classes, but the, the one thing that's missing that we're normally used to would be gaming. There isn't yeah. much gaming going on at those ones. Sure, sure. But it's, it's all painterly. A little, a little heavy. I like the balance. Yeah, I like to be able to like go up to the cases at you know at Crystal Brush or the Golden Demon stuff, mm-hmm. and and really like dig deep and talk nerdy and and really analyze and blah blah blah. But I also like to like fucking stroll back through and get some tendies and just watch some nerds playing some sweaty games oh, and yeah. just like you know scream at them that they're making mistakes. Right. You know, even though I don't know what the game is that they're playing. Yeah. Like I want to do. You know, I want to experience all that. Maybe that's kind of, I'm kind of like a, a weird little raccoon with an aluminum foil ball in that way because I, I I like to, I get distracted. I like getting distracted. You want to be steeped in everything that Manager Hobby has to yeah. offer, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I want the gaming. I want the, I want the painting. I think my top three are definitely Gen Con because it's huge and amazing. Yeah. I think Monty Sansevino is probably like the biggest, baddest European one, so I'll just pick that one. Sure, that's a good one. And then in my head... Oh, like Nova and Reaper are like the exact same con, and I don't know why I think that, but they just seem the same. So I can't pick between them. Mm. Nova is more war gaming. Uh, Reaper is more um, like RPG D and D. G D and D. Yeah. So if 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 you're looking for what I would consider the big differentiating factor, right? So I think you're probably more of a Nova guy. Okay. One of the reasons I'm really excited about Gen Con is Gen Con is probably. And someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It's probably the biggest, um, most well-known convention that's around like RPGs, like D and D and stuff. But it's also so big that it has a big miniature side of it too, and war gaming and stuff side of it too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, gosh, I that would for that alone, that would that excites me that I get to see that side of it because that's something Adepticon doesn't have. Yeah. Like it doesn't have the RPG side and the miniatures side that's related to that. Now, granted, there are companies that make stuff like Reaper for those things, but it's it's not really the focus. Okay. Um, this preamble ramble continues to surprise. We have more things to discuss. Yeah. Maybe you, we should just maybe we should nip some of these in the bud, eh? Yeah. I mean, we, who knows? The topic for today might not be a super long one, so maybe this way we get our minutes in. Let's keep going. All right. Okay. You, you got to do. You got. You did get a little collab here. Well, a little. I did two cheeky little collabs this past week. We'll talk about the second one and what we painted. Okay. Um. But the the yesterday we did a gaming stream in collaboration with Cool Money or Not, showing off. Uh, the Martell House faction. Wow. Um, House Martell, sorry. Um, and uh, it's the first time we've ever seen the Martells being played and actually seen their mechanics and their cards. And so Simon uh, got in touch with us. Shout out to uh, Jim, uh, who owns and operates Dark Sword Miniatures for facilitating that uh, that uh, conversation in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they gave us assets for the game, like pictures of the cards. Of the like logo for the House Martell, and then they allowed us to use Jim's like uh, Martell boxes, like the starter set and things beyond that. Um, and yeah, they let us do a little stream yesterday from seven to ten, showing off their their things. 
Curtis, uh, unfortunately, tabled him uh, turn five, which, oh, you know, no. like later in the game uh, because, you know, we're all uh, used not used to Martells. They have a lot of, like, activation text that happens at, like, uh, like you know, different times, so it's hard to remember everything. But you, it seems like, from what you were describing it to me, that they're uh, a more subtle, more strategic, more controlling kind of uh, an army. Mm-hmm. And those kinds of armies, when you don't know the know them inside and out and haven't done your reps with them, it's easy to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's very, and he's only played them twice, uh, Scott Sims, which is why we had him play and not me, because that would have been an even worse showing if I was playing. Sure. Because I'd never played them before. But still, uh, turn five is... Yeah. It's not like it wasn't a game for... Least, no, yeah. At least the first half. Definitely not. Uh, so that was that was a super cool collaboration. I'm happy to like you know be working with a larger company like Simon, and hopefully you can do more of that in the future. Yeah, well, that's pretty. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, last thing I want to talk about is we got fucking Vincey Con 2022 point two happening very very soon. Very soon. The wonderful Vincey V is uh, making the pilgrimage to Minnesota mm-hmm. in uh, two weeks time, mm-hmm. and so our next episode. Of Trapped Under Plastic will feature the Technomancer. The one, the only. Yeah. So it's going to be hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hardcore. (laughs) And you need to mentally prepare yourself for... How much Me, shit Vince is going to give both of us. Yes. Yeah. He's... he's. I feel like he has just been like... It's like one of those movies where, like, you've got the, the, the social outcast and they're just, like, grinding their teeth in their old shed in the woods and they're, like, lining up all the bullets. <laughs> I feel like you always set up some fucking massive uh, metaphor here and I have no fucking clue yeah. who this character is. Is this Vince's uh, Yeah, yeah, this metaphor? is Vince. Okay, okay. So he's, he's just got, like, his every chamber is loaded. <laughs> he's ready. He's fucking ready for this. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to... I think is like, what I'm most looking forward to this is poking the bear just enough for you all to see the real Vince. Oh, my <laughs> God, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's going to go off. I want to see him go off. Yeah, yeah. Here's why you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure, yeah. Um... <laughs> So that well, we're excited. We got a weekend plan. We got some fun things we can't even fully talk about yet. Mm-hmm. Um, got some super secret stuff. But you'll know. The good thing is, by being a member of the Goody PP Nation, you know the minute things are live to the world, you'll be the first to ever hear. I'm just yeah, building this the, up well, for yeah, Vince yeah. to give some hot takes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what the fuck you say, bro? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> like, um, I'm, I'm excited. Like, I don't know what he's talking about. It's yeah. going to be great. And we're going to have a fucking sleepover? Yeah. Uh, we're going to have like a couple sleepovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Unky Adam's coming too. Yeah. For a day. For a day, yeah. And so, and then we're going to have a sleepover at my house sleepover. one night. You know, because I have my, my wife and daughter will be gone camping that weekend and so we got to figure out the balancing of someone watching my dog. Mm-hmm. And so one night we're going to come back so uh, to my place and we're going to hang out and eat popcorn and watch Love Island or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Vince is down for that. Yeah. 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 We're going to talk nerd. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And, and then we're, we're going to fucking crash in the studio or something. I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure out. Well, uh, yeah. It's like, work. dude, we're men. We don't need to make that many plans. Yeah. I will say that. This uh, my lease agreement says that no one will sleep here ever. Mm. Well, um, but like I'm not like li- I think the implications you can't live here, right? Right. Yeah, like, that's why it, that's in there. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. It's like if you, I mean, because that's kind of horseshit. We'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm working really hard and working really late, and I fucking crash for a couple hours and get up and go back to work. It's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah. fuck you. Right. I'm I this- mean, I've already spent. Like the whole night here, I was when I was painting Lionel Johnson. I, oh I didn't God. leave. I painted until five a.m. the next day. So, all right. And then we got on a plane. We got on a plane. Went to Seattle. Seattle? Yeah. Yes, that's right. I'm trying, yeah. Okay. What do we paint? We gotta move on here. Yeah, let's you know? just keep moving. We can't right. lose all our energy just this early on in the podcast. Should I go first or should you go first? Uh, I don't have much to say, so I'll go first. Um, the only thing I really painted, because sometimes it lines up this way when we're recording the podcast, where it's like I finish up a video, and then the next week I'm doing a whole video in that week, and if that video doesn't prominently feature painting something, then I just 
all my work time has not been painting something. The only thing that I have worked uh, on, yeah, I get you, you know, and so that's the case this this time. The only thing I have worked on, and I didn't bring it because it's not done yet, but I'm going to be done pretty soon, is the Black Knight that I painted on your stream or started painting on your stream. It was probably a month ago or more at this point. Um, I've been slowly working on different sections of it and doing like, here's how to do this. I do little quick tip videos on my Patreon. And so I've been using that model. It's like, I want to finish painting them anyway. And it's like, okay, let's go over how to do like, you know, basic weathering and chipping and metallics and doing, um, you know, some stuff on the basing and that kind of thing. And so he's almost done. And so that's been, that's been fun. So okay. that's it. Cool. Um, I painted uh, three miles from Blood Rage. I'm um, doing the classic YouTuber thing where it's like you made a video that did well, just redo it again. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So I painted a model in 10 minutes, a model in one hour, and a model in th uh, 10 hours that are all the exact same sculpt. Um, just kind of uh, taking a different approach to the 10-minute one this time and also trying different things on the 10-hour one. Same kind of approach for the, the one-hour one. You know, I kind of feel like I'm stagnating a little bit on my one to two hour speed painting method you know mm. i think i want to try something else out maybe like a marco frizzoni like a like a something that like really leverages oil washes more mm. and stuff like that he's he's heavy airbrush with that that time too. too yeah yeah i feel like so i've been trying to figure out the magic of what he does that's like kind of the unspoken magic and i think part of it is just knowing what details and i give a fuck about and just like just almost not even painting them you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah he, he does a lot of like like important, interesting color choices from the get go mm -hmm. in how he does his basic prime and his zenithal and, and, you know, putting shades and stuff certain places that it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. And so there's a level of depth and interest already there. And so when he doesn't add a bunch of extra steps on certain things, there's already like the water level is higher yeah. on those things that don't give as much focus. That's right. Like, yeah. That's a big part of it. So that's def you're totally right about that too. Um, but like he's like he's like painting a GW model in 2022 with like six colors. Yeah, and it's like how the fuck do you do that? Yeah. So yeah, I, I want to try to figure out maybe a different way to approach speed painting so I can kind of like have something new to say because I've literally been painting speed painted models in the exact same way for like four or five years. I don't think you've been doing it in the same way. I think you have the same like formula, but I yeah. feel like you've evolved and tweaked and and adapted it a bit maybe not as much when from your own perspective that you see mm. i think sometimes too as you improve or evolve or change how you paint in a non-speed painting way that will rub off or have some kind of effect on your speed painting oftentimes for the better mm. or as you've been getting more reps and things even not on your speed painting level it can leak into your speed painting because you're able to accomplish it at a faster rate now. that's true you yeah know? yeah um, it has changed a little bit but yeah that that format of zenithal prime paint the thing with a like a slightly translucent base coat wash highlight 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 like that that process has basically been it forever yeah um I, i'd like to try i guess i mean this is probably an not the correct way to, to put it, but almost like a more of a Spanish style, implement that into uh, into speed painting okay. where you go, let's say you, okay, so for this guy's cloak, it was blue. You go in with either an airbrush or, or, or a quick base layer of blue. And then you go like, just you do all the folds and the highlights in like almost fucking white or like, or like a super bright sky blue. And then you go back through with an airbrush and you like, so it's three steps mm -hmm. um but you have that really stark thing but you're bringing it back down with an airbrush where you want you kind of have to have some precision yeah. if you're going to be able to do that in multiple areas or do almost like a marco does where it's like there are certain tones in ways that you're kind of bringing things back together that are more universal and you don't have to worry about overspray mm -hmm. he doesn't i mean in one he's he's got a lot of really good precision with his airbrush but he doesn't seem to worry about overspray that yeah much. you know i also noticed that from casey you meet rescue miniatures yeah um i, I kind of first heard it there because i had this thought going into airbrushing where it was like masking is a necessity sometimes but like if you get a little overspray on something it really doesn't matter that much yeah especially if you plan correctly like i remember when i was painting 
my eternal guard for my wood elves back when I was streaming out of my basement when the set was along the brick wall where my TV is mm, now. Yeah. I was painting those guys and I painted their cloak screen and like their like skirt things blue. And I did the the blue part second and I got a little bit of blue on the green cloak on the inside next to his torso, which just looked like shading. You know? Yeah. Like green and blue. So like if you plan it out correctly correctly, your overspray can even like help a tiny bit right yeah because it adds it's a really interesting thing when you do that is especially over something that's not like a really bright or really contrasting color that's going to stand out a ton um it just actually adds more depth of color especially when it hits shadows yeah and, and you're right it like it helps it it's like oh man or maybe there's just like a slight reflection from the bit of light that's under there of the blue from the pants is actually showing that on the too. green. Yeah, it's like reflecting off of your pants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That happens. We just don't usually paint that level of, you know, intricacy in every surface we paint. Yeah, for every model, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, yeah. See, so, yeah, I painted uh, three Blood Rage models. Um, I'm really happy with the 10-hour one, which probably isn't much of a shocker. But I actually had so much fun painting the, the TMM... Uh, spear tip uh, that I want to do one of those types of videos that I did a while back where I'm painting something fully unedited like I did a face I did NMM I did blending and I did OSL I did those four topics where I'm just like this is the painting process it's about like 45 minutes long I'm gonna show you everything I do and kind of speak about it in a stream of conscious way yeah and I want to do that for the other side of that spear tip because I, I, I've kind of collected a few TMM tips that I have enjoyed uh, using over the the past couple of attempts here that I think are you know worth sharing. Cool. So I want to do that. And then uh, my other collab that I did this uh, week was I got to go and paint on Fantasy Flight Gaming stream. Um, I got to go paint one of their Descent minis, and I'll put some pictures up now, which I got permission to share um, of their uh, their cool studio. And I'll just hand the phone to you so you can see them, see so you know what I'm talking about. But I, I walked in and they had uh, they had two sets. I caught some of the stream to see where you were painting there, and that was very. Cool. Yeah, it's a cool area. There were no painting cameras, which was a little strange. Uh, if you just scroll to the right, you'll see some more. But they had a ton of camera gear in there. Um, they had like a huge like scaffolding in the ceiling. So instead of having like a like a one square or like a square ish thing for like each individual set, the entire ceiling was a grid of just bars to clamp things to. Yeah. Um, they had lights. You know, okay. Actually, the first thing I noticed when I walked in was holy shit! They buy exclusively in teletech lights the exact same lights that i have the ones that you have yeah they had so many of those um it's a lot of fucking money i know right <laughs> so it was all over um the stream actually went down like during the stream uh and i uh actually ended up helping fix it uh they couldn't figure out how like why their mic wasn't working and it needed phantom power so we, i thought we found the phantom power switch and turned it on and then it worked um but i was painting this little uh, guy a berserker i believe is the name it was like an hour and a half long stream um, but yeah, it was nice. It was nice to, to, they were, they were all super nice people. Um, and, uh, it was, a it was a fun time. Yeah. I, I, I caught a, a chunk of that stream and it, it seemed like a lot of fun. It seemed cool. And this, that setup is similar to the way that, um, Penny Arcade does their mini paintings. Oh, yeah. Cause I, I hosted them one time and I saw they had that kind of like, that front a table shot, a close up shot. Yeah. 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 And then they did have they do have like cameras they can switch between of it's a it's an interesting angle, but it is it does show more up close. Um but they rotate all the time and I think they probably spend sixty percent of their time in that front shot. Yeah. Cause it's as much about the interaction and whatever than it is the the actual educational side of, of showing that right yeah i kind of realized that oh this is an interview he's just going to interview me about like my hobby and then i'm just going to talk while i'm painting and that yeah. that is the content of the stream so yeah that that was that was cool a different way to approach it for sure cool and like i have i need to go through and and do you have the descent two box i do yeah yeah i want to look through some of the i would love to show you yeah that the quality of this it's really fucking impressive. It, yeah, it is. Um, very clearly, they're yeah they're cast as individual parts, and then someone puts them together. So that so they're leveraging like that the whole dynamic nature that like casting in multiple pieces gets you, and they're also putting it together for you. And there wasn't a ton of mold lines to scrape away. Um, there were gaps to fill if you were gonna do that. I didn't do that, but like there wasn't a ton of other stuff to clean up. That's it's pretty fucking cool. Just just one of the models. I haven't tested them all. Um, yeah, that's why I painted. Cool. 
We painted things. Uh, one quick thing on the, the is it 10 minutes? 10 minutes, yeah. Now, the way my brain would work, because I haven't done this, and I'd, and I'd like to do a, a kind of a test, which means I'm probably going to copy you and do a video on it at some point. <laughs> um, it's funny, too, is that actually is on my list of ideas for a video I want to do soon, and I was going to do it this summer, and I was meant to do it in June. Um, but then I, I I didn't get to it, and then you're – I saw you work on yours. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do it right now, <laughs> which it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, the way my brain goes to it is like when I got to like the 10 minute one or whatever the, the quickest one is, I would approach it from a, what steps do you speed up? What spe- steps do you cut? What's the most impact? But in looking at yours there, did you do something like that, or did you just use more contrast? Did you just use contrast paints? I just used I just used uh, Armor Painter Speed Paint. Yeah. Um, so because last time I did it, everyone was like, "Why didn't you use like contrast paint? That seems like the perfect opportunity for it." And I was like, "Let me show you why." And so I tried. I did not finish that model in ten minutes. Mm. I finished it in twenty two minutes and fifteen seconds, or something like that. Yeah. Because- and I show I show where I got to in the video. Um, I got like I don't like, like halfway done because like maybe it's the model, maybe it's too detailed. But like, there's no fucking way in hell I'm gonna paint that whole thing in ten minutes, like with all the, like the cloaks and the fur and the ravens and the the metal and the and the wood and the leather. Like, there's just so much going on. I was also like, I was rushing. I was painting like messily, and uh, like there was no way. So yeah. with the with the black undercoat, like I did in the first trial, and just painting what I got to, what's left is just black and it looks fine, right? Yeah. What's up with this guy? is white primer and it's like that's clearly not done yeah um so so that's why i picked the black primer in the first place because what i didn't get to would look like shadow and it yeah it just does yeah i i see i i kind of i'm with you on that because the thing with with the speed paint and the contrast paint it's one coat but you have to not make mistakes yeah yeah you have to be exact you you have to be really tight with where things are going and most of the models we paint i think are closer to the barbarian there than they are like you know like a big minotaur or a monster thing where they would benefit more from that right Mm -hmm. where you could go more free flowy and there's not a ton little little bits and all those kinds of things Mm -hmm. and you can like oh the belly is going to be this more orangey and the back's going to be a more deeper brown and you can kind of blend them together and it can look great when the stuff has just got a lot of shit on it, individual <laughs> surfaces and textures and blah, 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 you can't do that. It needs to be crisp. Yeah. This meets this. And you can't do that fast. No, dude. I have a cream tunic right next to a blue cloak. If I get any <laughs> of that fucking blue on that cream, I, like I have to like repaint the undercoat. Like yeah. it's gonna, You're going to see it. It's going to look green and bluey. It's going to look terrible. And, and the way to, I want to say properly, like there's right and wrong in anything we do in miniature painting, but the most efficient way to have a good look when you're working with the contrast of the speed paint is your brush is properly loaded. Yeah. You can't like wick it all off because then you're just doing like an ink. It You need it to, to run into the recesses properly. And that means there needs to be a good amount on there. And you are fucking dancing with the devil when you got that cream right, right. next to that. Yeah. that you lecture like bloop over and it's like, foof, it just yeah. runs right in there. You gotta wash it, you gotta wash the model. And, yeah. and I'll, I'll throw this tip out there that I learned, I was gonna save this for the preamble, or sorry, for the, the extended portion of the podcast, but I think the less time that you are touching down with the brush and taking off with the brush, so the longer the smooth coats are, the better the result. Yeah. It makes it even harder, because like you need to like, Start somewhere, do a nice stroke, do a nice wash. Everything collects where it needs to collect, and the top surfaces are all stained the way they need to be stained, and then lift off. Like the more you're fucking with it, like the worse it gets because that stuff yeah. dries super fast. It dries fast, and like anytime you release, like there's like a little pool that's yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I recognize that, or I, I maybe I, I didn't consciously think about that, but that's kind of what I did. Where I actually first made that conscious connection was watching uh darren latham uh instagram post where he's showing how he uses contrast on his marines Mm -hmm. and he describes it and shows it in the way you're talking about there 
be it's particularly difficult when Marines are a lot of like a lot of cylinders. Oh my gosh. You know, yeah. right? So how do you do that? And he was just like, he's, he never pulled his brush off. He, but he kept moving it and moving it and getting where he wanted to until he wanted the, the most collection. And only then did he finally pull his brush away. Yeah. And it's really interesting. It's like, yeah. And that's, you have to like communicate that for people to really kind of get it. And otherwise, like if you work with the stuff enough, you'll kind of figure that out. But sometimes I find that's like I do a thing, but when it's like described or explained, even if I've already it, doing the thing, like it, it increases my level of knowledge or understanding. And it's like, OK, now I can conceptualize why am I doing it that way? Do I need to be more consciously trying to do it that way? Maybe I'm not always doing it that way. And that's why I'm having struggles. And like I feel like I get better at a thing. When I hear it from an outside source put into words. So mm. thanks, Darren. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, that's cool. Like you would think that, you know, like you, you probably have done this before because you were in a drawing, you know, like when you're coloring an image with like a wide chisel pen mm. or like a marker and like you do like a streak and then you do the next streak. But like you kind of overlap the that previous streak and you get like a little band in the middle. It's darker. Yeah. Does the same thing happen with contrast paint? Like say if you painted a a lamenter's leg, a space marine leg with like one streak and then like it dried as you made your way around the leg and then you got back to the the other side where you started and you put another streak down. Would there be like a darker band where like you covered it twice? That happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do. I mean, because it's, I mean, that's part of why it, it works and why you have to go over like a white or a bone color uh, primer mm. is because it's transparent and it, that color underneath of course. is going to show through. So gotcha. it's... You, do that the tricky thing there is is if you were to do that it's almost like cross hatching because that's kind of what you're describing in what's done in comic book art is you have the layer of lines to to represent shading where you wanted more shading to where show it where it's darker then you go perpendicular to those lines and you make the cross hash lines that that mm. they, where they where they're intersecting it's darker because there's a second layer so you could do that with your painting um you, but you'd have to especially with contrast you have to probably be okay with there being a line right where it's one coat and two coats and where those hit mm. um interesting it's like almost like you could like plan out where that happened on the model like if you were doing a space marines like you could start on the inside of the leg where it's going to be shaded and then do your work around and then come back to the inside and then it'd be darker on the inside and you could even like maybe like airbrush a little bit more on the inside of the light to kind of like blend out that darker band but just like kind of like accent it a bit more yeah um yeah because the stuff works a lot more it works a lot differently through an airbrush yeah i mean it works more like trying to create a, a tint yeah for sure um yeah, that would be really cool to like do two or three layers to almost like you're creating uh hard shadows or cast shadows yeah 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 and then one see how cool that looks that might just look fucking cool because it's a style in and of itself mm -hmm. um and two if you went back through with an airbrush and kind of you're like haze that line mm -hmm. that exact same paint color mm -hmm. what would happen god damn this is podcast is an endless resource of video ideas yeah, <laughs> yeah. like there's been at least three things where i'm like oh, okay i'm gonna write that down <laughs> <laughs> um or for goody peepees to test out themselves at home too. absolutely this video yeah. doesn't need to exist for you to be like oh that's let me try that out yeah give you it got, a shot let us know you got some fucking speed paints at home mm-hmm Snort that shit through a straw. And now for a word from our sponsor. John, do you know what just screams quality? Is it like uh, three fully funded Kickstarters in two years, and each of which was backed in a mere number of hours? That is oddly specific, but uh, absolutely correct. Our sponsor today, Terrible Kid Stuff, can definitely make that claim. That's right. They're back again with another successful Kickstarter, and this one's called The Secret of Green Peace. Peace as in a part of a whole, not peace as in not war. Got it? This time it's about little crazy little goblins and they're going wild and this time they're actually pirates. Are you telling me that terrible kid stuff is selling a green piece on Kickstarter? Is that allowed? <laughs> Their range of 32 millimeter miniatures are so fantastic that collectors, painters, and gamers will all easily be able to find a model that they love and dig into the fun realm of the secret of the green piece. I mean, these things have such amazing crisp quality for resin sculpts. I mean, oftentimes when it's tiny little resin pieces, it's like not quite as crisp, but these things are bananas and they're super easy to clean and assemble as well. 
This time around, in addition to their usual incredible goblin sculpts, they've added dwarves. For those of you who don't think goblins are enough, pfft, losers. And if you do think goblins are enough, you're also able to throw in any of the miniatures from their previous campaigns through their late pledge manager, including Scott's favorite, Tack the Executioner. Hashtag goblins are enough. Okay? Goblins are enough. We have we have unrealistic goblin expectations in this hobby. Yeah, like there should be no goblin shaming. Yeah, think of Tack. Thank you so much to Terrible Kids Stuff for sponsoring this episode, and please check out their late pledge manager for some great 32 millimeter miniatures at the link in the description and also the show notes below. All right, for today's topic, we have a question from Eric Walton, one of our patrons. Uh, as a $5 patron of Trapped Under Plastic, you can suggest topics for us to discuss, among many other rewards. Link down below. He asks, what do you guys find to be the biggest barrier in the hobby for yourselves and an experience level? What slows you down, saps your motivation, etc.? and how do you overcome those barriers? Thank you, Eric Walton. He sounds like a... A famous person. Yeah, Walton just sounds like a rich white man. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Are you a rich white man, Eric Walton? Uh, I bet his grandpa was for sure. For sure. For sure, bud. I mean, this is a great question, you know, because we're amazing painters, so nothing ever slows us down, right? No, no. The only thing that could slow us down is the just the sheer amount of our awesomeness can be overwhelming. Yeah, it can weigh us down. <laughs> we're joking, obviously. We're not amazing. Uh, and things definitely do slow us down. Um, shall I kick us off? Uh, you go kick it. I think what slows me down probably also frustrates you in a certain way. Um, so I recently had to paint a model uh, for Vinci V's wife, a dog that you also have to paint. God damn it. Uh, Let me he, get mine out right now while you talk about this so I can look at it. Yeah, yeah. Pissed. So I had <laughs> be pissed. I had a blue healer ranger. Um, and it, you know, it's kind of cast in that typical plastic rubbery kind of seam on, uh, green army man bullshit quality. It's not as bad as that, but definitely on the spectrum heading toward that. Yeah. Um, and like he just had so much stuff on him, so much, like so many bags, so many belts, so many daggers, so many knives. And so like, there's a couple of things wrapped up into this one model that really sap my motivation when I'm, when I'm painting. And, and one of those things is just so much trash, so much trash in the model, like uh, daggers, belt buckles, rings, like that is just such, it's so, it's such a slog to paint that kind of stuff. That's, that, that's the first thing. Deets on deets. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're saying it can make the active painting process, like to finish the thing or to have enjoyment of the thing less fun but also are you saying that like it then makes you aware of that and you're looking at a model of paint and it's like i don't even have the motivation to paint this because i know what i'm getting into kind of I, I guess i didn't really explain why i don't like all those details like there are many things that are enjoyable about the hobby of miniature painting and like one of those things is like painting in a certain way and being able to paint large you know tracts of land on a miniature like large open areas of, of, of painting are, are fun they allow for wet blending they allow for like any kind of blending just to be able to see like a cool transition and when like your model is just like edges to edges to edges to edges all it is, is just a base coat recess shading and then like an edge highlight if you have room for that so it's like when there isn't space to paint it's just less fun uh for that reason um i totally forgot your question though i'm sorry I forgot it too. If it makes you feel better, okay, fantastic. Um, I do have something <laughs> to say about that, and then I did remember my question. Okay, good. Um, to me, it makes me feel like I'm doing a fucking coloring book. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Because they're the little things you can do so little with them, right? And and you really don't have a lot of creative expression. Um, I mean, there still is in the choices of the colors and then how you do your highlights and stuff, but you're just so limited. And when there's so many of those things, it it just like wears on you. Yeah. To have to keep doing that. It's like, okay, she's got a necklace here and maybe a little bracelet here. That's fine. I can do that gold and whatever. But when it's that plus a little chain mail, plus a little belt, plus a little bracer, plus like a little trim on the armor. It's yeah. just so much stuff on stuff. You feel like you're sucking away all your time and painting of just doing little detail after little detail. So my question was, do you feel like it actually impedes you 
in a future paint job and when you acknowledge or recognize oh, there's gonna be a whole bunch of bullshit here do i not even want to paint this does it or does it at least does it bring down your excitement level it definitely brings it down it definitely brings it down and whether or not i paint it kind of depends so like the other question that eric asked was how do you overcome these things and to that i would say just avoid painting things that you don't want to paint right? right so like if so i actually bought that box dungeons and doggies because my wife likes dogs i like dogs i thought maybe we could paint them together um but like honestly, I would I'm gonna find a different thing that Amber likes for us to paint together. Yeah. Because like that it just wasn't fun. And and it's not gonna be fun for her either to have to deal with a model just like drowning in detail, right? The the excitement of painting dogs is sucked away in the first fifteen minutes when you realize how yeah. little of the actual painting of dogs you're gonna be doing. And okay, maybe it was just the one I painted, because you pulled one out and you were like, Oh, this isn't that bad. Yeah, look at look at that one. Um it's this is totally fine. Yeah, I can just tell in the first two seconds. Yeah, it's a it's a mastiff, mostly in a big, cute cloak. So really, I'm just angry at Kathy. She just wanted to <laughs> fuck with you. Yeah, she just <laughs> gave me the shittiest one. Um, now she told us she picked the dogs based on our dogs. She did. Yeah, she did. Yeah. So and this the, one's a mastiff, which I'm gonna paint him just like fucking Argus. And that's okay. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. I had a blue healer, but I painted it like a, a black shepherd. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this this is a totally fine miniature. I'd be happy to paint this. Um, I think what would be a, a a good thing to look at for you and Amber would be check out the Cobra Mode miniature stuff. Cobra Mode. Yeah, I've ha- that's the budgie I painted. Oh, <clears throat> oh yeah. Okay, it's Cobra yeah. Mode. They have a fu- lot of fun like anthropomorphic stuff, but it's not really well sculpted and designed. It's um, not really well sculpted. You no, know, it is very well sculpted. Oh, okay. design. I had two sentences that I want to say, and I put them in together. <laughs> um, they are very well sculpted and and designed, and they're really elegant in the amount of details of stuff that are on it. Hmm. Like the budgie wearing a cute little stocking hat, but he's not also wearing like fourteen Mister T necklaces and blah 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 blah. Hey, but there's a so t- much. Yeah, there's a ton of different kinds of things. Like, it's got fucking platypuses and shit. It's, oh, nice. It's just it's just fun, and they're cute, and they're weird, but they're also, like, like well-sculpted miniatures. And you can 3D print them. Yeah. Okay, so. cool. I will uh, I'll give them a follow, so I remember to actually check that out. Cool. Um, so, yeah, first thing for me, just details on details. I can't, I can't stand it. And I just wouldn't paint that model. Uh, if you need to paint that model, I painted it as a speed paint, which is what I did for, uh, for Kathy. I just painted it in an hour and a half. Because like if you, when you limit it, then like you can only work in that time, and then you can just move on after that. That's yeah. how I would deal with that 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 blocker. And sometimes I find, and that that is actually a really good solution is to not force yourself to set either unrealistic expectations or prolong the inevitable suffering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, you're only gonna have less fun, and that could that could roll over into you know not wanting to paint. The next thing. Yeah. And that's the last thing you want. Right. Um, and something about that, too, when I put that on myself, like if when we're like streaming or something, I'm like, I'm going to try to get this done today. Like there's a there's a bit of like almost internal excitement I get for that because I know I'm going to have a thing at the end of this three hours and it's going to be done. And then I can put it in. It'll, it, the purpose has been served and I'll be able to move on. And I'm excited to have a finished thing. Sometimes. I'll, you know, I, a lot of us at various parts of our, our painting journey, I feel like we don't get enough finished things. And the satisfaction, like the endorphin hits that you get from having something to look at and say it's done and I did this, is really important to keeping your momentum going to continue to paint, mm. is to have something finished. And when people are often like speed paint or batch painting or doing a whole army or a whole unit or a whole whatever, you know, every day that goes by that you don't have something that you're like, wow, I'm done. You know, you're you're kind of playing Russian roulette with do you burn out or do you just halt because it's you never get that feel good, mm-hmm. you know, that satisfaction of, of completing something. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why so many of us, whether it's for your work or whatever your hobby is or stuff around your house, um, projects with your spouse, you know, home improvements, making dinner, all those things, you have this sense of accomplishment at the end. Mm-hmm. 
And if you keep putting out the sense of accomplishment for yourself to the foreseeable future and foreseeable future, like, I mean, you're really taking a chance that you're just going to stop. Yeah. You know, cause you're, you're taking away the big part of the fun. So I that's think that's true. a big part of it. And so I like that when it's like, Hey, I'm going to do this thing today. I'm gonna get it done today. And so doing that with that dog, hopefully doesn't prevent you from not painting other animals in no. Dungeons and Dragons gear. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it depends. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, okay. So I've got one. Yeah. Cause I'm knee deep in dealing with this. And I feel like in the history of this podcast, um, we've had touched on this for you and maybe not the exact situation. I currently don't have a game that I'm painting for or a game that I'm excited to play and excited to paint for. Boy, do I got an option for you. Is it white dudes in different colored clothes? Yep. <laughs> With a solid C miniature quality, <laughs> <laughs> is that what you'd give C minus C? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's like a C plus B minus. It's like somewhere oh, in there. Oh man, you know, not even close. Not even close. Man, I think just about anything you could just like fucking close your eyes and hit pushing shit on my manufacturing hit enter and print it on your 3d printer is gonna be better looking than that. it will be better looking yeah the detail will definitely be crisper um yes that's, that's my problem if i can paint if i can print literally anything off of a 300 dollars printer and it's better than your board game right now it hurts my soul a little bit yeah and that's partially speaking of the quality 3d printers which is the good sign um they're not terrible they're not terrible it to me the game is more about it's it's so samey same there's one thing that's anti-John and that's samey same. Mm. Um, none of the factions feel different enough for me to be able to be like, that one excites me. Sure. Well, because that one also looks like that one, looks like that one, looks like that one. So none of them really excite me. Mm. It's just my own personal thing. I got you. Um, so I don't have anything that I'm super excited for. Part of this has to do with the fact that our Age of Sigmar um, crew, the the community in, in my town died from COVID. <laughs> resurrect it yeah no i i don't have the energy nor the time to do that myself because okay you could get to hold on what if you just got someone to play a game with you yeah you i do think that? that would probably you know kickstart it for me absolutely you know it'd bring it back and like, for your okay. community okay you know if i can get blair to do it because blair listens to the podcast because blair was instrumental in in our community when it was going strong blair ran at least one tournament and he he worked with me to do the league when I set up the league and so I just need somebody else like if I pay him in Doritos mm -hmm. in Mountain Dews you need a Dan yeah I need a Dan and Blair's a pretty darn good Dan so I just need somebody else to do the hard work <laughs> and then I'll get excited and I think it can start with one game yeah don't don't worry about don't put that baggage on you if needing to play like a, in a league and shit just play a game yeah. And like that's all I did for Song of Ice and Fire. And then like that just led to more games and more games and then tournaments and then more shit. So it's like just play one game. Yeah. That's all you need, baby. Yeah. I think I need um a, a big part of it too is the game of Age of Sigmar has changed so much. I don't say it's like it's a massively different game, but it's changed enough that I don't feel like I know it. Really? Well enough st anymore. Even watching Warhammer Weekly can kind of keep me up to date. And that's yeah, because I do. And I watch all those episodes and stuff. But I feel like it's probably just enough where it's just like I haven't had the firsthand experience. And that's why it's still feeling kind of foreign to me. Um, and so that's a part of it. Um, the other part of it is the overwhelming thought of, of all the minis to paint. Mm. And so that's why I've kind of been leaning towards um, Warcry. And that has gotten me more excited, plus the new edition and what I'm reading on that and reading the rules is excites me more. And I think if I get to like play a game with that, I'd be like, oh man, I can paint one of my blood knights. I can paint one of my vampire lords. I can paint, you know, five of the skeletons from the Cursed City box. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. It was like, ooh, that excites me. Mm -hmm. That excites me. The lie we all tell ourselves about skirmish war games, yes. Right, 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 right. Just this one. Just this one. I'm just gonna have one, and then I'm just gonna have one war band, and then and then before I know it, I'm fucking Uncle Adam, and I'm painting an entirely different war band every single week on a Twitch stream. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, he's got like seventy different war bands for Warcry. 
So, but that's a good problem to have. That means you're excited. That means models like, are too cool, man. You're looking to play, and that means like the cool models that they come out with. Like, I want to fucking play with them goddamn rat ninjas, bro. Yeah, bro. I want to rat ninja it up. Is that Underworlds though? You can use Underworlds models. Yeah. I, uh, I guess you can practice them for whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter, right? There's rats, right? Yeah, I mean, like fucking Slayer Sword Skink. Yeah, it's still a fucking skink. Yeah, yeah. And skink is a thing you can use in Warcry. GG. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm using the badass ones. You get more, you get more options and like uniqueness in each of your mm. skink models. And, like this one's name is Jeff. <laughs> this is Skink Jeff, and he where he's got a spear and he's got uh, his shield's kind of cracked. Mm. Jeff's seen some shit. Yeah, but he's right. alive and he's kicking. Right. Yeah. He's his job is to save Private Ryan. Get him out of there. Get him home. All his brothers are dead. Right. He's a proud independent skink. Yeah. You don't need no skink man. No, you don't need no skink man to pay his bills. Wait, is Jeff a female? No, it doesn't he matter. Does, he doesn't need one. Dude, he's a skink. I think that they can are amorphous or yeah, some they, shit. Asexual? They, they, they like split in half. Three, yeah, they're like they're like frogs. <laughs> frogs can go back and forth. Yeah, dude. So that's what this thing can do. Okay, so that's yeah. the whole fucking story behind goddamn Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Eggs. Uh, yeah, I definitely relate to you on this feeling. And I talked about it before on my YouTube channel. Like, yeah. It's really important to figure out what you like about the hobby and then do that thing. Yeah. And it's like, for me, I look at like the Roman Lapas of the world and like Roglin Studio and like all these amazing display painters. And I'm like, ah, oh, I want to be like that. I've always said that to myself. I want to be like Alfonso Geraldes. I want to be known for display painting. And then all I do is just display painting. And I'm like, man, this fucking blows. I can't. I can't. That's not me. It's not me. Yeah. You gotta figure out what you are and then do that, you know? Right. You can't you can't cheat yourself. Right. So yeah, totally agree with you. Yeah. And I, I think I'm in a little bit of a different spot than like you pre Song of Ice of Fire were at like a I think like a, a muse low. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um and I am not at a muse low when it comes to oddly enough, doing stuff for videos. Cause I can get really excited. And that about an idea, and that idea could be a basis for a video. And the idea could be the idea of making the version of the Chaos Knight that I think is cool to me, yeah, or yeah. or that kind of thing. And I really can get into a project. Yes. And the project is something that is showcased in a video, and that's kind of like single serving, right? It's like single serving friends on an airplane, and um, that's a reference. But they they're um. It's a, it's a single serving project and I can have the fun, the excitement in doing that. Yeah. And then I can put it down and I can find another single serving project that excites me. But I don't, what I'm missing is like f just for John ongoing related to fun. I'm having outside of the, you know, YouTube creation process. And, and, and I'm just like, I'm excited of, of building a thing for me and playing with the thing. Yeah. You get to a point where it's like everything you do on YouTube is like that's your entire hobby. Yeah. And it's just like That's definitely me right now. I know. It's my so whole hobby. I fucking get that. Um and for me it just felt like it, it felt like making the hobby into a job, which then kind of just kinda tanked the motivation. Yeah. Um so I totally get what you're saying, like I, I would like get excited about like, oh and I'm I'm gonna scratch build the sci fi building. And it's like, well now what the fuck do I do with this thing? You know? <laughs> so it's like I don't think that about everything that I paint, but like my collection of one-off random ass miniatures is getting ridiculous because of all these one-off random ass miniatures I paint for videos. Yeah, and so I could play like, like uh, not Frosthaven, um, Frostgrave, and have probably a sick warband of just like random models that I painted like one-offs of. Um, but like otherwise, we're not working toward like an army in a game. I think in times like these. There's always a, like these. There's always a question we need to ask ourselves. Mother Mary spoke to me. <sighs> and uh, it's an acronym. You just say WWVD. Well, what Vince do? Well, what Vince do? That's a fucking shut the fuck up and paint fucking man. Yeah. All right. So when you think about this, then I'm, I'm gonna peel back. I'm gonna peel back the Vince curtain here. Like, <laughs> you have the capability of doing this. Yeah. Um. Vince makes uh, one million videos. Okay. But Vince also paints one million models. The key is, is that if Vince is excited to paint a thing or wants to paint a thing or needs to paint a thing for an army or for a, a competition or for a, whatever other weird shit he has going on, 
he makes it into a video, mm-hmm. right? And that's not how my creative process typically works. No. Um, and that's why I'm better than Vince. Uh, but <laughs> um, but what he is, what it allows him to do is to put so much amazing content into the universe while still feeding his own gamer soul. Mm. He doesn't differentiate them. He's there was I was already doing this for this. I was already painting this Primark for you know going to Warhammer World, or I was already going to make a display board for my army I'm taking to Nashcon or whatever his situation is. I'm going to show you one aspect of it that I think is interesting and film it and talk about it and make a you know a painting tips seven thousand four hundred twenty seven and so. I think that there is a way that the line can intersect where it's like I can I can have an an exciting idea and I can use more of the things that I already excited to paint for myself. Yeah, I just need to find that. Um, it requires a smidge more creativity because instead of having a video idea and finding the right model for it, you are starting with the model and coming up with a video idea for it, and that can tank the video a bit because you might not come up with a, a better idea that you would have if you have done the reverse of that, right? Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's by design the way we, we do videos, the way we do them, uh, but it also has, you know, uh, other negative effects as well. And a mixture is always the, the best solution, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it from the creative process from other areas of the world it will, or of, you know, media and stuff, it'll make sense. It's like you don't start with, okay, um, I mean, you can be like, look, uh, Tom Cruise wants to do a movie with you. You're like, okay, all right. Now, what kind of movie is going to work with Tom Cruise? Mission Impossible 17. And that's how you get Mission Impossible 17, and that's how you get, um, you know, Fast and the Furious 48, mm-hmm. South American Hustle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Instead, you could be like, there's this amazing idea or an amazing story, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, as a fucking monster only hunts by sound and it's killed most of the world how does the family that's still alive how do they live okay this is a quiet place yeah like this is like you have this this ah this little i was like how does tom cruise fit into this is he he a really quiet person (laughs) no it's fucking you know at the very end jim halpert shoots him in the head (laughs) (laughs) check both boxes bitch (laughs) um so like it's like this this creative spark this this creative idea this this thing that like drives you and excites you and in, in thinking about how to to build it out um that that motivates me that excites me that's the way I, I want to work yeah instead of in reverse I get that um but you but in that regard you can still try to find places where the streams cross right where it's just like oh great now I actually can use utilize this to paint a vampire. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I need a game, man. I would love to get to play Warcry with you on stream. I'd love that so much. Yeah. I think um, we're talking. I'll play what else? Can I play what else? Or can I not play what else? Like, whatever the fuck you want, bro. Okay. Because I know you're going to play Death, and we can't both play Death. I mean, we can fucking dead on dead action. A little dead on dead. Dude, boners on boners. <laughs> 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 Ghosty boners and bony boners. <laughs> Fleshy yeah. boners. Okay, they're still <laughs> we're still going here. Yeah, we're still going. Yeah, and I just like the idea of like, and that's what I was like. Part of my, my kit bashing thing from a video that that just recently came out was like to having this this customization level and like the discussion we talked about with more time with the crew and that kind of thing of like making a thing your own and then like you know you feel like you put more love into the painting if it's unique to you and that's kind of the premise of that video is like finding excitement often comes from your own ideas of whether it's, Oh, I have this really idea, cool idea for a paint scheme or a really awesome army scheme idea or the, the story behind why these savage orcs are all painted or, or had the war paint that they do and that kind of thing. And the more that we find our uniqueness to our hobby, the more it tends to fuel us. And so that's where I'm like trying to find the uniqueness in the models that will excite me to build them out and paint them and play. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of, that's what I'm trying to, 
you know, I'm putting a little gas in the engine and trying to like cold start it, you know, okay, okay. while the killer's <laughs> running down the driveway. Uh, like, yeah. I gotta get this fucking thing started. <laughs> <laughs> just waving that chainsaw on the end like a crazy person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like, how do you overcome a problem like that? I think it just all starts with one game, you know? Yeah. You have to just, it, it does feel weird sometimes to kind of like get out of your house and like find someone to play and like get your shit ready and then go there. But just one game. And if the game is right, it'll just lead to more like naturally. You don't got to force anything. Yeah. Don't, don't over commit. Don't like go balls deep into it before you've had one game. That is so true. Yes. Don't buy a bunch of shit until you play the game and like, right. Okay. This has got legs. I want to keep playing this. People also around me want to keep playing it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And even like reach out to local Facebook groups and stuff. It's like, there's going to be a bunch of people that have multiple factions or, or war bands oh, or whatever to that. just play the game. You might, you may like play the game and realize like, Oh man, I'd really like to play a range group. What's a good one for range? And it's like by playing the game, you may help you decide of of purchasing or, mm -hmm. you know, or That's not. That's a great point because I, I like when I was like working for this, working on this video, which I haven't really fully described yet with the board games. I was like, okay, I could buy a bunch of board games and read the rules, or I could just find somebody who has the games and knows how to play them. And they could teach me. Yeah, it's dude. so much faster and it's so much cheaper. Yeah, so dude. that's a great suggestion. Right, which is, I, and you kind of feel, I kind of feel guilty, but my every Saturday board game night with Dan, Dan the Kickstarter fanatic, um, he does all the heavy lifting, dude. He know. know he reads all the rules. He's gone and checked it if there's any updates or FAQs. He's got all the app on the phone. Hey, he probably whatever. loves it though, right? He he loves it because he's yeah. a Type A personality and he's very much a. Ones and zeros and like in a row, everything yep. nice and neat. Yeah, and, and he likes to teach, so he likes to talk through Perfect. and explain that. And like I played enough games and I absorb it, and like I get into it, and it's like he didn't have to tell me twice. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Ready to go. Um, prints out like the fucking cheat sheets, one page cheat oh! sheets of the of the rules, which a lot of these companies you can get them on their sites and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what are all the stuff? So I feel like that part is is great and oftentimes you find people that really like a game that they're passionate about the game and so they're good at communicating it and to talk talk about it and so when you if you put out a feeler and be like hey does anybody in the area play a xyz game i'm kind of interested in it i'd like to know you know if we could meet up and if you could run me through a game and like people that are into the game are the ones that are going to respond to that. absolutely they want to yeah if someone was like Scott, can you teach me how to play Guild Ball? I'd be like, fuck yes. Let's get it. <laughs> you got 17 hours on <laughs> free? Because this can take that long to get through the goddamn rules. Don't you don't you fucking defame my game, bro. Dude, I, I like the game. I like the game. I hate you. It's, it's just a don't give me that butt. He likes the game. We're done. All right, next topic. <laughs> the, the, the thing is. The, the thing is. Here's all it would take for me to not have a butt at the end of that sentence. Okay, what's, what, I, I'm so curious. Last game I played of it, the fateful game. If I would have won it, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be that game. We could have played since then, and then I won that game. Okay, then I would be like, yeah, I'll throw for you. Then no, we'll I need to. I, I think my problem is my god. I picked my guild ball faction. Maybe there's a a, a better a, a, sto a connecting story in this story. I picked them solely on aesthetics because yeah. I fucking love how they look. Yeah. How they play is too hardcore for me at this point in what my you, guild What do you life. want? What do you want? I want to just fucking murder people. You want butchers. I know. I just need Bob the Butcher. Like Bill okay. the Butcher. So Bill the Butcher. Bill. Billy Butcher. William Butcher. Uh, so Curtis beat me in my last game because it's been like a year and a half since I played. I misplayed so many times and he was just fucking killing me. He just rammed it down my throat. And I was like, what do I do against this? And he's just butchers. Like the 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 goal is so fucking clear. Yeah. It's run and just murder, and it yeah. works so well unless you know like how to deal with it. Um, so yeah, like they got the cooks and the butchers; they both do the same thing: kill people. Uh, too many cooks. Yeah, <laughs> way too many. Dude, that's that's the name of my fucking war band. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch of cooks. Okay, now that I've convinced you to play Guild Ball, I'm definitely getting those cooks. You should like name your Captain Gordon Ramsay or something. Oh yeah, they're all gonna be. I need fucking Julia Childs in there. Giada De Laurentiis. I need uh, uh, who's that? Who's a fat orange uh, orange uh, Crocs okay. man? Fat orange Crocs man. Why the uh, fuck anything of him? 
Uh, obviously, there needs to be a Guy Fieri. Uh, there needs to be. <laughs> oh, man, dude. <laughs> there, need, there's, there needs to be uh, uh, Emil, Emil Lagasse. Emeril Lagasse. Emeril, Emeril Lagasse. Uh, yeah. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he hits somebody, he's like, bam. Dude. Salt, bro. Uh, Gita. Oh, yeah. The, who you said. Or no, yeah, Rachel, right? Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray, 30 minute <laughs> meal. Shout out. Her, like the head of her. She's a chibi model. <laughs> yeah. From that South Park episode. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All head and just stick body. <laughs> you got a lot. You got a lot to work there's with. A, there's a lot of good options. There's a lot of good. You need, obviously, you need Elton Brown. Elton Brown. Oh, the man. man. All right. People don't care about this conversation. But, <laughs> uh, All right. Next next roadblock. Um, shit casting quality. Oh. When a model is casted poorly, and I guess, you know, I told you I had two things left. I really have one thing left because they combine to be the same thing. When it's bad casting quality and or I can't tell what's going on on the model, dude, I'm out. I'm out of here. So, like, uh, this often happens. That doesn't often happen, but it happens more often with uh, hand-sculpted models. Mm. These Blood Rage miniatures. They're sculpted by hand and then cast in like a, it's kind of like a double whammy. They're cast in kind of a shitty plastic as well. It's, it's not easy to paint, but also the detail doesn't render as well. And so when you're looking at details like the armor on his shin or the armor on his forearm, it's like, what is really going on here? Like, where does this, where is it supposed to look like? Uh, like, where do, where do these feathers meet with the, the feathers coming out of his helmet here and on like his side? So whenever there's mystery, and I need to like if I have to look at the box art to figure out what something's supposed to be, that's a huge red X. Like I do not want to do that. Um, so yeah, that definitely kills my mojo. Um, to solve it, you could look at the box art to figure out how it's supposed to be. You could look at the concept art to figure out how it's supposed to be. Um, sometimes priming it helps. Like if I'm looking at like a tan plastic model, priming it in black will like reveal more stuff about it to mm. me. Even zenithly undercoating it can help as well. Yeah, I hate that. Usually it's the, I, I, I totally feel you with that. And usually it's, I you experience it from the other side. Like you're really excited by the sculpt, right? Mm, that, oh, that wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and so I have something that kind of got my brain thinking. Um, it, another thing I've dealt with recently, it's like you're super excited by a sculpt. And there's a prime example is the Spira Mirabalis. I can't say that word today. Uh, Spira Mirabalis. Or, uh, is that what it is? Mirabalis. It's M-I-R-I-B-I-L-I-S. Mirabalis. You just Mirabalis? say a bunch of eyes with a bunch a of lot of eyes in the middle. Mirabalis. Okay, so Spira. Um, you open the little box. You get this little gift box in the mail with the mm. little twine on it and the little wax seal. And then there's a little scrapey paper papies on there. <laughs> okay, it's that was funny. Uh, it's Spira Mirabilis. Mirabilis. Okay. Um, and then you pick out this hand sculpted, beautifully casted, pristine model. Mm. And you're like, oh my God, that gets you so excited to paint. And then, and then you're like, I don't know if I can do it justice. Do you actually think this? I just for those, like I really I, those models. The the I had a little bit of a of a um a step that I took when I painted the Lucas Pena sculpt yeah. by Black Crow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, it's doable. Oh, so it is it was so it was a a bust thing, perhaps. Yeah, kind of a bust thing, but it's more of like. He's got this like perfect sphere of they're exclusive, they're collectors, they're beautifully done, they're all art pieces. They're not a little rat with a sword. Like, like there's all there's, there's <laughs> not not to say that Lucas at one point won't have a little detail on one of his models along the back will be a little rat with a sword yeah, and a yeah. chef's hat. From yeah, yeah, ratatouille. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's what I need to have is my <laughs> my, my guild ball uh, mascot. Your mascot, <laughs> dude. Fucking ratatouille, rat dude. <laughs> dude, can I just say the plot for that movie is fucking crazy? Like, rat controls human by pulling on his hair like as a marionette. Like, it's fucking weird. Yeah, uh, I think I already said this on the podcast, actually. Uh, makes yeah. sense. I feel like we've talked about ratatouille at some point. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a weird plot. Yeah, um, yeah dude. Uh, yeah, so, okay. 
this is the day I learned that I have a, a bigger ego than John has. Oh, because I have never experienced that feeling. But a lot of people do. They're like I, I can't do do this justice. Um, I'm I'm at a point in my hobby career where I think I can paint anything and have it look reasonably decent. And I feel like you could also do that. Maybe you don't believe that about yourself yet. Yeah. Well, I think that I could I could paint it and it would look good. The problem is is I. I'm looking at like, you know, the Mark Bisclan's paint job of something similar or yeah. that same thing, or I see Jose Da Vinci's work, or I see, you know, fucking Darren Latham's flamey fucking Legion space of the marine, damned. dude. And I'm just like, fuck, god damn it, I. And I get over and I, I it's not like well I I'm not saying I couldn't paint it well. I know what is required of me to shoot for trying to hit their level, and, and that is fucking overwhelming. You don't have time to do yeah. that with your current schedule. Like yeah. if, if we wanted to paint, like uh, I Tommy Alando Torrent paints his busts, like we would need to spend. 40, 60 hours painting, which is like when I get a day of painting, it's not painting. It's checking emails twice a day, answering four of Alex's questions, answering two of Amber's questions, like fiddling with some shit that was broken from the stream. And then I get to paint for four hours. Like that's what a full day of painting looks like. Yeah. And so it's like, if you wanted to paint a model like that, get that quality of result, it took a long time and we need to change kind of how our schedules work a little bit. Yeah, you, you, and it's not, I mean, don't fucking feel sorry for us. But, no, yeah, don't. Um, it's It requires a amount of dedication and planning to be able to do that in your free time over the course of months. And that's true of everybody. That's not yeah. unique to us. Every goody PP that's watching or listening you have to have a level of commitment, dedication, and consistency to do that. And when I see these amazing sculpts that I will only ever own one of and that are only 500 in existence or like 250 of existence or less than some of his older stuff, I don't just see the model. I see the weight of everything else. And I wow. just don't. I put it back in the box. I smile at it, at the work of art that it is, and then I put it back in the box because I know I'm not confident in the commitment that I will have to put myself to in order to do the model justice. And so, I, and I, I think that some version of that feeling is not uncommon. I see versions of it, I hear, I, I see it explained expressed in Facebook groups. I see Goody Peepees talking about it. My friends, other miniature painters that, that paint for competition levels, that some version of that message is pretty common. And even if it's just for painting your stuff for your army and you've you you know got all these orcs and whatever, this this weight you put on things that is beyond just paint on brush on model. And I think that there's maybe maybe that's just our own psyche getting in our own way and we are putting up these these barriers or we're overthinking everything instead of just shedding that and just sitting and doing and letting it happen mm -hmm. organically because this is an artistic pursuit and that should be a, a state of flow a state of creativity a state of release and that adding all this extra baggage on yourself is kind of not helping you get to the the enjoyment of why we're doing it in the first place, you know? Absolutely. Couldn't so, agree more. So I think maybe in some back ass words way, I just got to what the approach or solution to that would be is to to not put all the extra baggage on any project or any one mini or anything and just sit and do it and let it happen. And you will get better and you you will improve and, and you if you get to a point where it's like, I want to push it more, I want to push it more. The more that I've painted, the more I realize I can't fuck it all up in the first three hours anyway. You can't fuck it up like at all. Yeah. Like it may take you more time because you realize you need to redo or tweak or reassess or add more 
saturation or do whatever mechanical things, but you're not going to fuck it up. But you're never going to get it to the point where it could have even be fucked up if you didn't just sit down and do it. Right. Start. So um, maybe a, a slightly more practical solution would be if you want to like break into the world of busts or a world that you're not familiar with or even a manufacturer like KDM models, just find a really good painted tutorial on a specific model and buy that specific model and just follow it like brushstroke for brushstroke. Like there are a lot of people on Patreon painting really nice, pretty busts and so showing you a large portion of that painting process. Like you could start there with a great guide and then once you build confidence, move into other things uh, in your collection. Obviously make sure it's a model that you are looking forward to painting and will have fun painting, um, but that could be a good way to kind of like do a little bit of hand holding in the beginning. Mm. Mm, that's good. Yeah, there are uh, master classes out there for certain elves that you know you know soon to be released currently uh yeah getting edited right now actually the yeah. one is almost done yeah uh, still, oh, that would be a great place to go i still need to fucking look at your script <laughs> you fucking look at my fucking script <laughs> dog that's okay. okay it's it's so fucking well written you're just gonna like it'll just be like butter if you just like slide through it's like a fucking slip and slide with baby oil on it i hope that script i hope that is true yeah. I would that make my job easier. Yeah. Just you need to make sure as you read it, you read it like I'm talking. You hear my voice in your head and you're like, oh yeah, that phone sounds fucking phenomenal. John Vision. Yeah. Don't read it like you're reading a novel or a newspaper article. Okay. Read it like someone's talking to you. Okay, okay, okay. That's how I write. Okay. For scripts. Good to know. Not when I like when I when I write the my great American novel, that's not how I write. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else gets you down, John? What gets me down? Um I feel like I don't know. Let me think for a second. Okay. Alex. It doesn't necessarily need to be anything else because our preamble ramble was fairly long and that yeah. was at least 30 minutes of chatting. Yeah. we. I think we hit some good we good things. Like I'm trying to think of like me specifically because specifically, like well, you kind of want to relate some of this so like it's, it's relatable to people at different parts of their miniature journey but also it is the question itself is directed at, at us specifically mm -hmm. and I feel like for the average bear we're probably – further along in our painting level and quality and stuff. Mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to like wanting to do very complicated projects and feeling like you don't have the time for it. Like I have so many, like I have like a list of video ideas on Google drive and a lot of them are like bucket list ideas where it's like, I want to convert a whole Warhammer war band or make a whole tables worth of terrain for age of Sigmar or, or paint like a really complicated bust. Like I bought the that elf bust. Um, I think I forget it was Nico Galaxy. They made a bunch of fantasy characters. Ben Comets painted one. Mm -hmm. A couple of Spanish people painted some other ones. And I bought the elf one, who's holding like that crystal ball. Oh, you got crystal balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to paint her just like the box art, but like that would that's gonna take a super long time. And so I, I don't I don't know where that fits into the schedule. So I can definitely relate to the the feeling of having big projects and just not being able to do them, and then kind of just them just you know being off to the side, languishing and never getting them done, and that kind of being a, a demotivating factor in your hobby. I have all these big awesome ideas, and I can't do any of them because I don't have the time to do them. Right? Yeah. Because the other thing about crystal balls, yeah, is you know i just envision you're in like a you're in like a 1970s nasa control room mm. right that's like that's your brain it's a 1970s nasa control room and, yeah, on, the, yeah. and on the wall there's a big metal wall because everything's fucking made out of metal mm -hmm. right and there's a big like uh, a big meter you know they have like the red thing and the meter can go higher or lower yeah yeah defcon 7 yeah and then it's like you know the brain is like beep, 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 an old piece of paper prints out of the computer yeah, yeah. <laughs> they rip it out and they look at it and it says crystal balls and then the guy looks up at the wall and there's the meter and the meter goes like wham, 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 wham. and then his eye pans up and you see the label above the meter and it says futz yes it's the fucking futz o meter bro but, futz city dude dude futz o meter off the charts off the charts and then that's when you say to yourself oh fuck man can't do it i know how much futzing is gonna be taken care of here yeah. it's gonna be Lots, yeah. bro. Lots. Bro, <laughs> lots. I don't know if I can commit to that. Yeah, but the thing is, no matter where you're at in the painting journey, that futzing is going to happen. And what I found is, so much of our learning is condensed in the futzing stage, mm. because futzing means you're trying to 
fix a thing. You're trying to make it look away you thought it was going to look, but it didn't. You're trying to, you know, crisp things up. You're Proactive trying- futzing, though. Yes. Right? You got to be, like, doing shit and being like, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? I'm going to try something else. This is, this is, it's not what I want it to be. How do I get it there? That's proactive futzing. Mm. Fucking mindless futzing. No. God damn. That happens just so naturally. I know. You're just kind of like, you're, I don't even know what I'm thinking about. I'm like thinking about like, man, you know what? I wish that I could get a chicken and steak burrito at Chipotle. <laughs> I wonder if they allow me to do that. And then suddenly you've been painting black pants for an hour and a half. I know. It's you're like, like shit. It's fuck. God <laughs> damn it. It's 3.30 already? <laughs> yeah. This model has a backside. I've only been painting the front part of pantaloons. I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. I mentally check out sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I got nothing done. Yeah. I there, There's a lot of paint on my palette. Yeah. <laughs> it's spread out a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going all. Look at all these mixes I did. What the <laughs> fuck was I mixing? <laughs> there's a green here. There's no green on this model. I don't I don't even know what was happening. Well, it looks like I got a little bit of a specular highlight on the cheek done. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's that's a mental checkout futzing. Yeah. Now, there are certain kinds of miniature painting, certain kinds of, of projects where the mental checkout futz is fine. That is that yeah. That's good. Yeah. You're just chilling. Yeah. You're just you're painting. It doesn't matter what you're what you're getting done. Hanging right? out with hanging out with your friends and painting. Yeah, dude. Maybe watching a Twitch stream and painting. It's like I just need to get a bunch of yellow armor done today, dog. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And I'm gonna listen to the office. Yeah, the literal best of all painting streams. Oh. I'm gonna be fucking yeah, watching. A little Kenny Boucher in there? Right. You're the fucking beats lab. Dude. You know, fucking hobo sink. Dude, what's the name of your office? I don't have one yet. You gotta, you gotta have one. Miniax Mausoleum, the Beats Lab. Dude, I, that's the, but here's the problem. You can't beat the Beats. <laughs> the Beats Lab is the best name. Yeah, yeah. There's no music being made there, and I don't even know what the fuck that name means, but it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, dude, it just, it just matches Kenny's energy <laughs> so fucking great. <laughs> I love it. So what you need something? You need All right, it. I need something. I'll I'll put my best people on it. Okay, okay. That's just me. Yeah, he's he's it's him. It's just there. me after like ten natty ices. <laughs> that, those are the best people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll text you at two a.m. All right. <laughs> I'll be like names, and you'll be like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> you'll be like elbow deep in a bag of Doritos and oh, shit. Yeah. You'll oh, be yeah. getting that message, and you'll be like, with my green piece. He fucking did it. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking did it. <laughs> did it. All right, I think we're about done talking about things that you know are roadblocks for us at our current stage in the hobby. Let us know what your roadblocks are down in the description below whether or not you relate to the ones we were discussing here or we have different ones uh we'd love to hear them both here in the facebook group everywhere i want to transition this to talk about what is quite literally the most exciting sponsorship we've ever had so far on the podcast you did it you finally got in contact with mountain dew i know i did no unfortunately that's not it the unicorn yet eludes me there no i'm talking about What's kept my 3D printers burning the night oil for the last two and a half weeks, my friend? Mm. Epic Basing. Epic Basing. Oh, you mean the company that makes a ton of different kinds of little basing bits that are super easy to use, interchangeable, and dynamic, so I actually get pumped to paint my bases? Yep, and the vast variety of trees, branches, plant life, rock types, concrete, debris, both natural and man-made, animals, and even more crazy shit that you can get is kind of mind-blowing. And like you said, it's completely modular. So your whole army can feel like it's in the same environment without any two of the bases being alike. Epic Basing not only sells these in resin, so you can buy them and install them on your bases at home, but they also sell them in the STL variety. So if you have a 3D printer at home and you want to print them out, you can do that. And we got a special deal for the goody peepees here. The first 66 members of the trapped under plastic family that go to epicbasic.com and you use the promo code it's a trapped <laughs> <laughs> like that yeah it's a pretty good play on words there guys our canadian friends at epic basin came up with that one you get 12 percent off your order so the first 66 only get the 12 percent off it's a trapped epicbasing.com Shout out to Epic Basing for sponsoring this episode. You can find links to all our stuff down in the show notes and description below. Now on to the newsy news. 
LVL painting classes are sold out. Well, not all of them. Just ours are. Shout out to anyone who bought one. Thank you for the support. We super appreciate it. But there are still more classes to purchase from other amazing painters if you see fit. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of seats left in, in a lot of them. Most of them. I mean, not to scratch your own backs, but, you know, I don't know why scratching backs has anything to do with this, but... Ours is the nice. first class to sold out. Oh. I mean, that just means we're the best. Yeah. Painters. Wilhan. Teachers. Get out of here, bro. People. Eric Swinson. Come on. Who? Did never heard of him. Ben Dude, Comet. Doesn't this model look like Swinson? Yeah, it does. <laughs> What the fuck, dude? Bro, okay, obviously right, we need to find joking. a picture, an up close of that <laughs> model and Eric Swinson's fucking face yeah, right dude. next to each other. Especially, if he had, I don't know if he still has long beard. Yeah, he's if he once he was a long beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he used to board the shores and like pillage and steal gold things and shit. He's a fucking Viking. Um, okay, so yeah, yeah, check that out. There's some great classes still available, and you could still like see us if you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go. Sure, yeah, go take a different person's class. Um, like the great Willie Hanna's, and you can still hang out with us in the evenings and shit. Yeah, we're gonna bum around for sure. It's I'm gonna con. find the best fucking El Las Vegas food. Uh -huh. We should go fucking buffet hosting, oh, yes, bro. Yes, we should go to a buffet in a casino. Yes. yes. Okay. We're so excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. it. I want to fucking crab legs m my whole weight. Ooh. <laughs> so, have you ever eaten soft shell crab? No. You eat the shell as well. I haven't either. In I'm, like a in like a po' boy, like soft yeah, shell po' boy, like deep fry whole soft shell crabs and just fucking huck them on things. I do that. I hope they take the poop out first. Mm, no, I want to eat the poop. The poop and the eyeballs. I love the sea animal poop. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you ever, <laughs> yeah. You ever do that? You go to a you go to a place and then you can just see that little black line running down that shrimps. Yeah, dude. I just cut that out and just fucking slurp it up. <laughs> it's like spaghetti. It's like yeah. spaghetti of the sea, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> spaghetti of the sea. <laughs> All right. The next point. Uh, new game from the corrupted minds of Uncle Adam and Vince V coming the end of this month. Uh, we are going to have some hot deets, maybe some live stream games. Yeah, bro. They're bringing the heat, and we're excited for it. Yeah, I have played this game, not the final version. What? Yeah, Vinci, uh, Vinci Con, the, the one that you weren't there. Mm. Um, I, I alpha tested this game. Ooh. <laughs> it was so much fun. Is your name in the book? I fucking better be. Or I'm going to sue his ass. <laughs> 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 um. No, I'm very, very excited. So this is news. This is a late breaking news that you're gonna have when it's late breaking. It's not late breaking yet. It's early breaking. So we're early breaking. We're breaking the early birds, <laughs> getting the worms, eating the sea spaghetti. Okay, <laughs> next one. Resin Beast 2023. Uh, Creature Caster has announced two big things. One. They are partnering with Parabellum Games mm. um, to make Resin Beast even bigger and more badass than ever before. And it's nice. This is not the first time they have said such a statement, but they have like doubled down on this that they want Resin Beast to be the biggest miniature painting thing. And I don't know what they mean by biggest. Obviously, they're looking at prizes here because there's going to be. Over fourteen thousand dollars in prizes. And I don't know if that's just cash. Sounds like it's combo combo platter. Okay, so I looked it up. I was like, "Is this include like, like your product, or is this just dollars?" And I w went on the website. I read the announcement, and I, they didn't specify, as far as I could tell. So yeah, that could be fourteen k and just straight up cash prizes. That could include some prize support from Parabellum Games and Creature Caster. I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm guessing there's a good chunk chunk of change there because the first, the first resin beast, the one that I won, first place was five grand. Mm -hmm. So if that was the case, then I gotta imagine. Um, but they have a variety of different categories. So now they have some that's like you can use Parabellum Games models and different categories. Uh, Creature caster, and then they have best in show, and they have all this uh, interesting things. They have this thing that. I don't know if you saw this, if this was the first year that they did it, but that the resin beast this last year, they had categories of, I can't remember the exact terminology, but here's the core of it. Traditionally painted and like alternative painting. It okay. was fucked. I don't like this. Basically, it's like, if you paint it like it's realism, that's traditional painting. Oh, if no. you paint it like fucking Kaha, 
that's alternative painting. Okay. That's different categories. Yeah, I guess when you break things up, they're easier to compare. But the problem is, is how do you break things up, right? right. What What is traditional and what is non-traditional, you know? And it, I don't know. It's like, well, does it have, if it has got a bunch of OSL? Like, I don't, like, I, yeah. I mean, I say Kaha there because that's a, it's a great example. Yeah, that's painting like, style yeah. is is very stylistic. Yeah. But is Ka uh, competing Resin Beast? She did. Yes, she did. She's won Resin Beast. Oh, son of a bitch. And maybe that was. <laughs> I was gonna make a point that I just fucking fell flat on my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she. Um, when they didn't have it in person and they just did the online only, um, she won that, and then she, I think she, and then she won non traditional at. Or maybe she didn't come in person this year. I can't remember. I remember Death Con. Either way, she has one, and but um, her style is very unique. It's very cool. Like you can look at two things, like a thing that's painted traditionally and hers. They did it in fucking Golden Demon, and you can still judge, mm-hmm. right? It's I don't know. It's all art, so it's like you're real. It's really fucking nitpicking shit. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Anyway, I think it's cool. I think that it that, is cool. That's so cool. Those two companies are really, you know, they're really committed to, you know, showcasing competition painting and high level painting and all that kind of stuff. They're kind of really committed. The one thing that makes me feel like they're not committed is that these are manufacturer locked competitions. Yeah. Golden Demon, Resin Beast, and I'm assuming it's going to include Parabella models, only accept models from a range of minis. It's not whatever you want. I think if they were fully committed to the love of the craft, it'd be like, you can paint whatever the fuck you want to paint, and there's a cash prize. Like, so I think that's a different animal. Is it? I think that, okay, you can have something like a Monty that is sponsored by these c- companies, but not run by those companies. Sure, you know what I'm saying. Sure, and you, so you, just, I mean, you need to have the flag bearer not be one of these big companies. Why not? Why can't a big company run a competition and allow anything to come in? Because at a certain level of the corporation, the person that's signing off on it is going to be like, and not necessarily. Maybe they, that person, like the CEO or whatever, really has to be into this really have to have had like fond memories of crystal brush or something like that to see the value. Otherwise they're going to say the bottom line is why the fuck are we paying or building or committing to something that's featuring our competition? Yeah. You, you, you're just thinking from someone's perspective who's thinking about just the dollars. I'm thinking thinking a generic perspective. I'm not speaking to, you know, Creature Caster or Parabellum or even Games Workshop. I'm not speaking to them specifically. I'm thinking, what is their mindset of this decision-making process? Sure. So, like, I understand you got to look at it in in a business way as well, and I would say that you have a couple options for yourself. One, this is a community-building event that you are doing. People are going to attach themselves to your brand because you are the flag-bearer for this cool fucking thing. That's yep. one thing. Yep. Two, you could have a category for your thing that had its own special prize or the same prize, whatever you'd want to do. So you could still encourage encourage sales while also being badass and open for everybody. I know I would respect the shit out of a company that did that. And I'd be more inclined to talk about them as a company. Like like just 100%. I, I, that is total truth. So, Yeah. And I think... Um, I think that there's a lot in the court of public opinion that can be gained from that. And I think we're starting to see a little bit of that, not exactly in this, but from what I'm actually seeing from one, my interaction with, and two, kind of the message that's going on around right now with Army Painter. That company is, you know, being forthright in saying, we're trying to improve. We're, we are trying to stay competitively priced we want access to all painters but we're we're not hiding the fact that we want to improve on our paint products and they told me that and they they said and i I did my video about their paint range and shit and it wasn't super nice like i said some harsh shit and that they saw it and they said yeah we see it we respect that we're trying to improve and we don't want to hide or we don't want to squash your opinion on stuff if it's not only good things. And I'm like, fuck, that's not common. So I think the more that we can get companies 
that will change in the direction of that their ship is headed, I think it'll help the the hobby overall. It'll make for better experiences for us, better products for us, more more options for us. So okay. I mean, like, here's another way to look at this question. Like, should a company run a competition that is just generic? You have a company, right? Mm -hmm. You have yourself as an employee, possibly going to get some more employees. Would you run a competition? Let's say you have a couple models that was generic or that was only your minis. Like, what would you do as as an individual? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I guess what was the, what was the motivation behind why I did it? Like, if we... If TendyCon was a thing and it was a aspect of uh, our business, right? And I would see a lot of value in keeping that net as wide as possible because that's an association with a thing that we're trying to grow and to trying to showcase the coolest of the cool, to to try not to narrow anyone's options for what they wanted to do, what they were excited to paint. Right. I think there's a ton of value in that. Yeah. I think we tend to, as humans, look at companies as like non-human entities that have these like things that motivate them and like, oh, obviously there are companies. They're going to, they're going to limit it to things that they are going to sell and make money on. Like that, that's just a a fact. But it's like those, that company is made up of people like you and like me that are passionate about this hobby. And if they're truly passionate about this hobby, make it open. There are ways to do it while also still making money and still being a company that people enjoy and love and respect. Um, I don't think we should let them off the hook like that easily just because they're like, obviously they're a company and they want to make money for themselves. It's like, well, you have an opportunity here to be really fucking awesome or or like kind of fucking awesome, you know? <laughs> so that, that's my thought on that. Yeah. I think that would, it's really interesting if you look at the space right now that is Adepticon from a mini painting perspective. You've got like three, four, five different companies all running their own mini painting competitions. MCP, P3, Resin Beast, Golden Demon. Is there another one in there? I think there is. That's still crazy anyways. Four is crazy. Right, right. Like, like it's so weird. It's like, we're all here. We're all, we're all at the same place. We're all together. Why don't we just kind of all do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, all right, it's like, let's have somebody step in and be like, you know, like, hold my beer. Let, let's fucking do this. Let's I know. Do a big, the big show again. I mean, they're not gonna do it. So you know who's gotta do it. We, we gotta, we gotta be the change we want to see in the world. So Absolutely, Gandhi's gonna do it. Yeah. God damn it. I think I could call up Dalai Lama and see if he could come over and yeah. be like, He'll look us up. Look us up with the perfect rubric. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. Ten years. Ten years of miniature Batman miniature game. That game turns ten years old. Uh, this year we have a huge community, not a huge, we have a large community of gamers here that play that game, uh, in my area and like uh, the twin cities in, in Minnesota. Um, shout out to Stefan, um, who loves that game and, and runs all those games. Uh, they are releasing an anniversary edition of yet another Batman. I think this game has like a zillion sculpts of fucking Batman. Oh yeah. You gotta just, the name of the goddamn I, I, game I, I, is yeah. Batman. It's not the goddamn name. Yeah. But you can get a Batman and Robin 10th year anniversary edition mini. Dude, you know what they need? They need the Ace and Gary minis. Ace and Gary? You know what Ace and Gary is? No. It's from Saturday Night Live in late 90s, early 2000s. It's an animated short. And they were, they were like Batman and Robin. Oh, it's two names, Ace and Gary. Yeah, okay. Ace and Gary. I got you, I got you. If people got it, they'd get it. There's probably minis out there somewhere in my mini factory for Ace and Gary. Um, <laughs> Couple couple other things here that I want to make sure we don't miss because but they're they're uber importante. Um, I don't know if I can fucking find them on there. What the fuck? Okay, second wave golden demon tickets, baby. Yeah, all the golden demon tickets in for the UK one. You know, they're like, oh, they were they were gone in thirty seconds. So it's okay, it's fine. It's whatever. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a second wave. Well, the second wave sold out in ten seconds. Um, and so. If you were painting for months to get your piece ready for Golden Demon UK, uh, tough shit. Uh, <laughs> um, you don't get to go. But uh, all the people that are wanting to go to see all the painted minis will be there. But the painted minis themselves may not be there. I'm curious if we see an obvious dip in entry numbers because of this ticketed thing 
it's going to be so it's so hard to predict what the numbers were in theory capable of being and then what they will be because there's such a great span of time since the last golden demon it's hard to predict what like this is what we predicted there would be 7000 pieces entered it was actually 2000 like to know what that gap is that's i don't know i don't yeah. know um it's all speculative so um, okay have we ever ticketed golden demon before is this a new thing this year um it's weird because the way that they do it and i was listening to the culture of paint podcast because they they were talking about it this in this last week's episode and they have a lot of more history and understanding and and how this shit has worked in the uk and it's fucking weird i didn't even realize this but like they do golden demons at all sorts of weird random fucking gw events yes it's like a, it's like attached on to something it's attached to a random fucking thing yeah and i'm like what and so like the historically like for those events, they had X number of tickets, but what they were explaining it was like, there's never not been a time where you couldn't walk up and get a ticket day of. Mm. Like, it was never an issue of of size. So what's going on? Like, we've certainly had a Golden Demon event attached to, like, a bigger thing. How come that never sold out immediately? What's Why is this so popular? What's, do you know what's happening? They, okay. Games Workshop uh, sat with their thumbs up their ass, to try to determine, were they going to have this event for so long that no venue was open for them to reserve? Oh. So they decided to do it, but they couldn't hold it anywhere. This is what's claimed. They couldn't hold it anywhere because all those places of larger venues were all booked. So their only other remaining option was to just host it themselves. They don't normally host it themselves? I thought so. I so thought for, for a sure. lot of these small ones. Yeah, but we're talking about small ones 10 years ago when the when the popularity of the game and the painting was like 8% of what it is today. Mm. And so, like, they weren't worried about their max capacity. It's like 550 fucking people in that building. Mm -hmm. Like, that wasn't a concern. This is, there's like, this is so log jammed that once it finally breaks free, Everybody wants to go. Everyone has been painting through lockdown. Everybody has not competed in forever. And it's just like, it's the first big, massive, or major GW event in the UK since coronavirus. It's going to be fucking big. I guess they're just, I wouldn't even tie it to something else. Like, why wouldn't you just, just do a Golden Demon thing? And this other thing that they're doing, hand-holding with it, do that a month later or earlier or whatever separate them yeah so you can you can spread out who's there for what yeah um painters are pretty easy to to make happy we just want to be in the same room as each other and then just talk about mini painting for hours and look at each other's shit that, that's literally all we want to do easy to pleasey yeah and if it's like a two-day event fuck that's the perfect amount of time for that stuff Dude, you could even have it be i mean okay let me just fucking solve this stupid ass math equation right now okay you have you have tickets for the event to enter, okay? And then you also have the open day where it's open for anybody of the public to get a ticket for that event. The painters aren't there that day, okay? Friday, it's painter's day, submit your paints, blah, blah, blah. Saturday, open to the public, none of the painters are there. Bam, that's all those painters, that 550 people aren't there. Sunday, awards, and painters again. You could sell... Instead of 550 tickets, you can sell 1,100 tickets. I can definitely see an argument for why you wouldn't want to do that, though. You know, it's like you're selling tickets and the, the verbiage is confusing. It's like, with this ticket, you can come on this day and this day, but not this day. You know, it's just a little confusing. You're, it's pretty cut and dry. Are you entering a piece in Golden Neiman or are you not? Right. And this is the options for you. And this is strictly because dealing with logistics, how do we make this work? Yeah, but like what other con does that? Yeah, you know? No, you don't want to do that. Right, I'm saying yeah. this is not ideal. This is based on the situation that they found themselves in. Mm. This is my solution to actually allow all the painters that want to submit pieces to be able to and still opening it up to the public to, to go through and look at all the cool pieces. Yeah. does allow you to sell more tickets, which then is making more money, but the logistics get a little bit more complicated because you have to like... Currently. 
turn people away that like maybe had a ticket for a different day but is the wrong day it's like no you're here too early come back tomorrow like that i just see that being a little problematic yeah I, the, my whole goal with this is to solve the issue of painters that want to compete not being able to like how do we allow that to happen mm -hmm. you know and this is how you allow that to happen and, and not basically you're competing with ticket space with people that aren't entering the competition i think that is innately just fucked and yeah, stupid you're definitely going to want to avoid that kind of thing yeah anyway hopefully it's still it, the event all comes and goes and it's great and it's whatever they talked about something on culture of paint that i think is has the potential for drama to happen i think it was really you know a interesting point for that they made um that is there going to be an asterisk in this year's golden demon mm, oh because not everyone could go yeah no i mean Hey, there's been drama for dumber reasons with Golden Demon in the past. <laughs> so I hope that that's not a thing and that catches fire or whatever. But Because, okay, people win Slayer Swords at game-specific Golden Demons. Yeah, like, like and weird, like, random. But, like, the award doesn't say, or maybe it does. Does it say, like, Horus Heresy Slayer Sword or, you know? I don't, I don't know. think it would. I don't know. Um, I feel maybe. like those days are probably gone. I think from today forward... Knock on wood. This means the game and the hobby continues to be as popular as it is. Like, anytime there's a Golden Demon and a Slayer Sword, it's now fucking open season, and it's going to be all heavy competition. I don't. Yeah. I mean, they've they've reduced it so much by the number of events and the number of locations and all that. Mm, yeah, it makes it harder. And yeah, people are better at painting now too, and there are more of them. So yeah. yeah. So anyway, I hope it grows again, and there's couple and one in one in canada one in australia one in oh, fuck it, i don't know <laughs> salt lake city i don't know <laughs> you already say canada yeah, i said canada nice do they used to have one in japan do you have a japan golden demon what yeah um I, i'm flying to fucking japan man i <laughs> get my fucking win that way baby so a couple people went to gen con and they told me the things they saw there have you heard of the term war crow no. So War Crow is a game that Corvus Belly is making. And uh, the link that I have for you, it's the last bullet point in the news. Ah, oh, Dan showed me this shit. Okay, yeah. So it's two things. It's a game like Bardsung, like Descent, like Massive Darkness. It's a it's a dungeon crawling, loot collecting board game. Okay. But at the same time, I believe it's also supposed to be the fantasy version of Infinity, a skirmish game with fantasy models, which you've seen probably yes. the elf and shit like that. I've seen four of them. Um, yeah. So they are, they're nice looking minis. Uh, they're looking to do Sio cast with those, I believe. Um, uh, actually no, uh, what, uh, what Evan told me was that the ones they had there in the blisters were Sio cast, but they're currently trying to find a manufacturer in China who can produce as good a quality as their Sio cast prints or casts, and if they can't find it, I don't know what they're going to do, but that's what they're currently doing, a little bit of R&D for their... Fucking go with Sinocast, Seocast, because it's cheaper than doing it through China anyway? I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You know, it kind of depends on like, the the, the, like, the agreements they have. I, yeah, it's in, in quantity, maybe. Yeah. That too. I can't imagine them. I mean, they're not... No offense, Corvus Belly. You're not that big that the sheer number would be an issue, but maybe, yeah. maybe. I hope it's super successful. Yeah. So yeah, um, maybe another skirmish war game for us to check out and buy models for. I mean, if the quality of those sculpts are like the ones I saw, I'm fucking. You're down. Consider me interested. You're down, to clown. The last thing I want to talk about real quick in a, in a packed newsy news. Did you hear a, ga a Games Workshop and gave away something for free that they typically charge for uh the cards for war cry yeah the pdf came out or something like that right so it was supposed to be i was really excited you know i got i got the new war cry edition popped that sucker open took the dudes with the bull helmets and threw them in the incinerator and then i <laughs> grabbed that rule book and i'm like fucking gonna read all these goddamn rules i'm like first thing i do when i when i pick up a rule book of war cry i, I flip to the page to look at the scrolls to see oh, let me look at all the dead scrolls right yeah, yeah, yeah. not in that book do a little digging. Oh, they're coming out with a second book that's just all the cards and scrolls and abilities. I'm like, fuck, awesome, another $40, $50 you're going to have to spend on this. And it's going to come out two weeks after the box did. I'm like, what the fuck? Hmm. Come to find out, for some reason, that book, after already been talked about officially and spoiled by Games Workshop, 
wasn't being made, and they instead released them in a series of Warhammer community articles. Very is, convenient way. Which is, you can't even fucking find these rules on any central location. I know, I fucking checked. Let alone the rules not coming in the fucking box that the models come in. Yep. What? Yep. So you have to go find them. And it's four separate articles released on different days for the different Grand Alliances. Bruh. Order, chaos, death, and destruction. <laughs> okay. But they're direct PDFs of just the fucking book that they were going to sell us. So yeah. I'm like, something fucking happened in the manufacturing process here. And that's why this shit has happened. I guarantee goddamn TS. I guarantee goddamn TS. They're okay. like, oh, fuck, where we get all our books doing? Like, I think they got lost at sea. They got fucking backed up. So our whole goddamn game is out and people can't play it for another three months because that's when the books are coming in. That's what I predict happened. But this is all fucking wild John speculation. When we say this is a news segment, you just like put a fucking asterisk at the word news. Like, well, like it, that happened, but we're now speculating why it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think they had all their books on a boat and they all went down and it's like fucking Titanic. And it's like no one is going to care about this. In six months. So what's what's the fucking point? Let's just why wouldn't they sell the PDF though? You know, it's GW we're talking about, right? Yeah, true that. But if they sell it, I don't know if they've <laughs> ever uh, I don't we're know like if they're speculating about a good thing GW's doing. It's like this is not normal. Let's speculate on the speculation here. Yeah. I think they wouldn't do that because I don't think they ever have a track record of selling something digitally only as rules for their game. Uh, okay. You know what I'm saying, dog? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. They're still they're still shit lords. Okay, yeah. yeah. There, there's the storyline. <laughs> Fuck these guys. Hey, the the only important thing, this is the headline. GW gives us something for free. They had always made us buy. <laughs> that's that's the details in and of itself are not as important, but the fact that I actually can go look at those things now so we can get the rules and we can play. Okay? That's what matters. No, it's what matters, truly. One final gripe about fucking Warcry. All Warcry come out with these cool, awesome chaos war bands and shit, and they're all unique war bands and all this shit. And they all suck ass compared to the other <laughs> ones for just like the regular Age of Sigmar game. What is up with that? What do you mean they suck ass? They don't all suck ass. No, they're like they are known to be that none of them are any good in, in terms of in the game oh, oh. compared to if you made like a Stormcast Eternal list or a Goblin list that or, makes a, no sense. De or a Skeletons list or whatever. Those that are just using the regular models with the regular rules are all better. <laughs> all of them. That's not normal. That's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you make the shit that you're making special models for that they have to people have to buy specifically? Wouldn't you make those better? Or if anything, why wouldn't you make them all just, you know, balanced? I don't know. Don't, that's a B word. They don't use that word. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use that word <laughs> at the shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all of the goddamn news we have for today. Welcome to the end of the podcast. I want to tell everybody that I've been extra farty today because my wife and daughter are gone on a, a camping trip for like a week. So and you're so, just eating fucking beef jerky and drinking Mountain Dew? Bro, the last two days, all I've eaten is frozen pizza and drank Mountain Dew. Dude, okay. Have you had <laughs> Motor City frozen pizza? I've heard of it, but I did not, I did not have it. Who have you heard of it from? Did I fucking tell you about this already? It might have been from you. Okay, never mind then. You, you get it in the grocery it. stores here? Uh, you can get it at Costco and in Walmart. The cheese variety, the pepperoni variety, they are amazing. Okay, they have no business being that good as a frozen pizza. It's amazing. Oh, man. I vouch for it as a, as a pizza snob. Yeah, I'm going to hit up the Costco. Hit up the Costco. I've, only, I've only had two frozen pizzas in two days, but let's make it three for three. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you like this podcast, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, we, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. If you want to support us, one, just tell your nerd friends about us. Hang out with us on the Trapped Under Plastic Facebook group if you want to do that. That isn't actually supporting us, but, it, you know, you get to hang out and you get to have the tough experience. It supports us in a way. All year long. Yeah, you know, it, well, yes, it does. Pads our ego. That number goes up. Right, right. You can you can pick up some some tough merch, like some, some cups, some cuppy cups, some sweaty shirts, and some T-shirts, and I think that's all we sell right now. Um, you can check those out. 
um, at uh, trampedinterplastic.com. And uh, what else? Scott usually does this part, so I'm just going to keep on limping my way through it. You, <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you can support us by uh, disabling ad blockers on YouTube so you get our uh, ads every, I don't know, 30 minutes? Every 30 minutes, baby. Every 30 minutes uh, there. Um, you can leave us a, a review wherever you listen to the podcast. Um, that is That is very helpful as well. You can also become an official member of the Goody PP Nation. By joining the Trapped Under Plastic Patreon. Scott, what do they get if they uh, join the Patreon? Because they need something, because they would never do anything for free. First of all, round of applause for John. <laughs> it only took, that like, it took like eight minutes <laughs> for me to get through it, but I did it. You did a great job. Uh, as part of the Patreon, you get access to an extended episode of the podcast, about 30 minutes longer. We talk about new things we tried out in the hobby. We talk about models we love from other painters that we've discovered in the last two weeks. And we also give feedback to one of our goody PPs. So as a patron, you get to submit models for us to look at, but you also get to submit topics for us to discuss. Today's topic came from one of our patrons, Eric Walton. Thank you very much for the support. So yeah, that's what you get. We did it. We made it all the way to the end of the podcast and we mm. talked to, I got more frozen pizza farts coming. So we're going to have to <laughs> see you real soon. Next episode live with Vinci V. It will be live when we record it. It won't be live when you listen to so it. So not live. Not live. <laughs> I'll just get that straight right now. Live is just a, a word that makes it sound more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Until then, we will catch you on the flippity flop.